Good evening, everyone. We're going to call the City Commission meeting for Monday, November 15th, 2021 to order. May we have the roll call, please? Commission, Commissioner Villa Vasquez? Present. Commissioner King? Here. Com Commissioner McCool? Here. Commissioner Ramos? Present. Commissioner Sosa? Here. Vice Mayor Bradford? Here. And Mayor Herzberg? Here. Now this evening, we're gonna go ahead and turn the meeting over to Commissioner Sosa for the pledge and national anthem, et cetera, and the invocation. All right. Um, if we can get everybody to please stand. Uh, Mr. Pisa is going to give our invocation today. Would you bow with me, please? Father, we thank you in Jesus' name that we have the privilege of coming here tonight, invoking your presence to be a part of this meeting. We thank you, Father, for all those who are here tonight. We thank you for the concerns for our city. We thank you for our great city commission and our mayor and vice mayor and all of our city staff. We ask you to bless them, anoint them, set them apart for tonight, Lord God. The decisions being made here tonight will benefit this city and its residents. And Father, we'll give all the glory, the praise, and the honor to you as we do this all in your son's name, amen. Amen. All right. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Now, it's my honor to introduce Maya Eager. Um, she's from University High School, 14 years old, and she is a ninth grader, and she'll be singing our national anthem. Thank you, Maya. Thank you so much, that was amazing. We're gonna go ahead and begin our business meeting now. For um, the beginning of our business meeting, we need approval of the minutes of the regular commission meeting of November 1st, 2021. So move. Second. Motion by Commissioner Ramos, second by Vice Mayor Bradford. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Now we'll move on to the fun part of the evening, presentations, awards, and reports. The first presentation, we have a proclamation proclaiming the week of November 7th through 13th as HOSA week, shatter your expectations. Commissioner Ramos. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And as I walk uh, down, if I could ask uh, Ms. Tr Ms. Taylor Cra Grace, she's a Health Supervisor Academy for a director uh, for Deltona, and she's gonna bring along with some of her students. Uh, we will also have one, a proclamation for Pine Ridge, but we're gonna read one, and then we'll make sure Pine Ridge gets its own as well. And if there's anyone here from Pine Ridge, please come forward also for the HOSA proclamation. Thank you. 
whereas Jose, Jose Future Health Professionals is a career and technical student organization for high schools, post-secondary, and middle school students who plan to pursue a health career, and whereas Jose serves as a pipeline of future health professionals, and whereas Jose provides a strong foundation for preparing tomorrow's healthcare professionals through skill development, leadership opportunities, and community service, and whereas health science education and Jose support the encourage students who interests lie in pursuing a health career, thereby helping to alleviate a national shortage of health workers, and whereas HOSA promotes the development of responsible citizenship, personal integrity, and compassion for humanity. Now, therefore, we, the mayor and commissioners for the city of Deltona, Florida, do hereby proclaim November 7th through the 13th, 2021, to be HOSA's week. Chatter your expectations in Deltona and ask our citizens to recognize our future health professionals executed this 15th day of November 2021. Would you like to say some words? Sure. Hi, thank you so much for recognizing us. I'm Taylor Grace, like you said, I'm the new director of the Health Services Academy at Daytona High School. Um, our academy is made up of about 180 students. They work extremely hard, so thank you so much for recognizing us. Uh, we do have regionals on December 11th, so if you would like to judge, send me an email, but uh, wish us luck. Thank you again. I'm not sure if they want to take a picture. Let's oh, just yes, turn around. Sure. Okay. Here we go. Thank you. No problem. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Next item is a pro proclamation proclaiming November 2021 as Native American Heritage Month. Commissioner Sosa. Thanks. Unfortunately, our representative to receive this proclamation isn't available tonight, so I'm just going to go ahead and read it from here. Uh, Proclamation, whereas the contributions of American Indians have enhanced the freedom, prosperity, and greatness of our state and nation, and whereas their customs and traditions are respected and celebrated as part of a rich legacy throughout the United States, and whereas during National Native American Heritage Month, we also honor our Native American veterans and service members who have courageously served and continue to serve in our armed forces, including the brave Native American code talkers in World War I and World War II. And whereas Native American roots are deeply embedded in this land and we remain committed to preserving and protecting American Indian cultures, languages, and history while ensuring prosperity and opportunity for all American, American Indians. And whereas it is essential that all Deltona citizens learn about contributions and history of American Indians. And whereas Native American Heritage Month has been reoccurring monthly event in November since 1990 when former President George H.W. Bush signed a resolution declaring November as Native American Indian Heritage Month. Now, therefore, we, the mayor and city commissioners of the city of Deltona, Florida, do hereby proclaim November 2021 as Native American Heritage Month, executed this 15th day of November 2021. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Next on our agenda is um, a presentation by our Volusia County Sheriff, Mike Chitwood. Sheriff Chitwood and see Captain Marino back there. Thank you for coming out. Oh, this is good news to come out and see you folks tonight. I see you're smiling. That's a good thing. Well, we're giving you a rebate, so that's, that's yes. what it is. Uh, we can all be smiling for that. Right. We, uh, at the end of reconciling our budget, obviously, you know, this is my first budget year being constitutional. We don't work under the county's constraints. Uh, you guys are getting a refund from the sheriff's office for uh, $864,000 to go back to you guys to use whatever you're going to use it for. John already has a few suggestions, but I'm not, I don't think I should, should tell him about the educational fund that he wanted to start. But uh, um, yeah, it's not going to be the John Peters education <laughs> fund. Um, my recommendation is that with the commission's consent, is that we place this money in a law enforcement capital uh, fund so that when the sheriff department has capital need, uh, that we would have money set aside for that purpose.
good. Hey, whatever you guys want to do. I mean, every city this year got a rebate, a refund, and everybody's doing different things. So, of well, course, we, your refund's the biggest. Yeah. So. Oh, thank you so thank much. Thank you all very much. If I don't see everybody, have a great Thanksgiving. And, and you too. And thank you again for all you do for all the Deltona residents and for Volusia County. Thank you, Sheriff Chitwood. Okay. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I have a question, Chair. Yes. Do we still have Do we still have the Explorers in Deltona? We have we have the, the countywide. The countywide, right? Okay. Um, do we have any grants? Like you know, every year we give our Harvey Scholarship grant. Do we have any grants as far as the scholarships for our high school going into college? We we do it for our Explorers. It comes out of our. Yours, okay. Yeah. Out of our youth, out of our youth foundation, that youth foundation is normally what pays for a class or two or three or whatever uh, the young person decides to do. Okay. Well, because I know our scholarship a few years back, um, things had changed, so now it's just coming directly out of our budget. So I wasn't sure if that was something too that we could look in as well. So, I mean, you're always looking for more deputies, and you know, to do the encouragement for a scholarship for individuals maybe going into law enforcement, it might be something to encourage our Deltona students to to go into just a thought we're game for whatever you decide <laughs> thank you sir thank, thank, you. You. thank you yeah <laughs> thank you vice mayor Okay, now we'll move on to ordinances and public hearings. Item 6A is a public hearing. Ordinance number 06-2021, amending ordinance number 21-2009 as amended by ordinance number 10-2018, representing a major amendment to the Deltona Village Business Planned Unit Development, the BPUD, to incorporate eight separate parcels totaling approximately 10.3 acres to the BPUD and vacating certain lots and rights of ways associated with various additions to the Davis Park plat. Mr. Paradise. Uh, Madam, you, Madam Mayor. Oh. Yes. If Can before, I jump ahead of you, Ron? Yeah, uh, yeah. I was going to turn the floor over okay, to you for quasi-judicial procedures. Um, Madam Mayor, this is a quasi-judicial hearing. Okay. And so, as you know, we have certain rules we follow. So you'll have to, everyone on the commission needs to disclose if they've had any ex parte communications. And then I'll swear in any anybody who wishes to speak um, and then Ron will present and the applicant I believe is here and may speak to you and then this is the first hearing but as you all vote at the end on whether you're passing on to the second hearing or whatever's going on if you would just give a brief comment as to why you think it should you know, like either it complies or you think it looks like it and you think it should go to the second hearing. So, so we have a complete record. Thank you, Marsha. So would you like to go ahead and start with the ex parte communication? Okay, we'll go ahead and just go um, right down the line. Commissioner King, any ex parte communication? I have no ex parte communication with anyone. Commissioner McCool. Shockingly, no. Commissioner Ramos. No, Madam Mayor. <coughs> Vice Mayor Bradford. I have driven by the location. Commissioner Villa Vasquez. No. Commissioner Sosa. Uh, I've driven by that location and I just talked for about 30 seconds to Mr. Mays about it just to get some clarification. <laughs> so that was about it. <laughs> Thank you, sir. And I just, um, I have none except for the fact that I talked to the two gentlemen that are here this evening and introduced myself and said hello. So that's it for the ex parte communication. Would you like to swear the people in now, Marsha? Would anyone like to um, And this is for item 6A. You don't have to, you can't, you don't have to do that. Um, do you swear that the testimony you're going to give in this matter to the commission is the truth and nothing but the truth, so how you got it? I do. Thank you. Okay, now Mr. Paradise. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Ron Paradise, uh, Community Services Director, City of Deltona for the record. Ordinance number 06-2021 is a major amendment to the Deltona Village Business Plan Unit Development. The Deltona v Village PUD is situated on approximately 130 acres of land and is located generally south of the Graves Hallam Boulevard corridor located west of Deltona High School. Deltona Village is currently developed 
with a racetrack gas station, a Burger King, and of course, the Epic Theater. Uh, ordinance number 06-2021 represents the second major amendment to the Deltona Village project with the last and first major amendment occurring in 2018. The major amendment here being discussed uh, is very limited to the addition of eight separate parcels to the Deltona Village project. The eight parcels are small and between the collective they total about 10.3 acres of land. Uh, these eight parcels, considered exception parcels or in holding parcels, are part of an antiquated subdivision known as Davis Park. And we'll talk in a little bit about Davis Park in just a few minutes here. Through the years, the applicant has been diligently acquiring these in holdings with the intent of further consolidating this area. Uh, this amendment Notwithstanding adding 10.3 acres of land to the Deltona Village BPUD does not change the uses of the BPUD, does not change the intensity and density or any of the development parameters associated with the project. It's just to bring in these, these properties into the Deltona Village and put it under the umbrella of the BPUD. As part of Ordinance 06-2021, staff has suggested the lots and certain public rights away associated with the 1920s vintage Davis Park plat or subdivision be vacated. The vacation element of this re request will impact six of the eight parcels and will involve the release of public right-of-way areas that have little or no utility. Basically, these right-of-ways represent half of the original platted right-of-ways that have, the other half's been long since vacated by the city, and these right-of-ways kind of go, you know, the roads to nowhere, so to speak. Uh, the incorporation of these properties into the Deltona Business Plan Unit development will allow the property to be developed under a unified development pro pattern, and a unified development pattern will facilitate more synergistic projects and consistent with modern development forms. Also, this request is consistent with the uh, city's comprehensive plan. With that being said, city staff does suggest that the uh, city commission approve ordinance number 06-2021 and schedule a second and final hearing for December 13th, 2021. I'll be happy to field any questions you all may have with regard to this. Commissioners, if you have any questions for Mr. Paradise, and if you, Commissioner or Vice Mayor? If nobody has anything, I'd like to make a motion. We're gonna go through the, I think before we do the motion. Marsha, do we need to go through the applicant before we do the motion? Um, sure, if the applicant wants to address the commission, do you need to or do you want to? No, I don't think they wish to. Also, I don't know if this did go to the PNZ and they did recommend approval. Yes, they did. Okay, so Mr. Paradise, you have spoken. The applicant declines, don't need to speak. So if you would like to make a motion, then we'll go to public comment. Okay, I hereby move to adopt ordinance number 06-2021, <coughs> excuse me, by adding eight parcels totaling approximately 10.3 acres to the Deltona Village Business Plan Unit Development and vacating certain rights and rights of ways associated with the Davis Park subdivision, updating the Deltona Village BPUD MDP and scheduling a second and final hearing on December 13, 2021. The acting city manager has the authority to make corrections, Scribner errors and the like. Second. Okay, properly moved by Vice Mayor Brad seconded by Commissioner Ramos. Pub may we now go to public comment on this item. Madam Mayor, we have one public comment. Albert Bryant, please. Albert Bryant, Deltona. <laughs> uh, let's see here, where should I start? Oh, that's right. We're vacating land. The city is vacating land. Um, I have a question here. What are we actually getting what I call in return for this? We're just 
going to vacate this land and get no guarantees of how it's used, why it's used, what it's for, any guarantees down the future that, you know, things will be done a certain way by the developer or by whoever actually ends up dealing with it. I haven't seen any of that in the paperwork, just the fact that the city is vacating land once again without getting any guarantees on how anything is developed, how anything is actually set up here. It's basically like giving a blank check to a company and saying, here, you can do whatever the heck you want to with it. It's amazing to me how we just bend over and say, please. Thank you, sir. That closes the public comment portion of the hearing. And um, I would like to address that comment. This is a quasi-judicial hearing based solely on vacation of, this, of these rights of way. This has nothing to do with what goes on the property. This is solely a land use item. And uh, pretty much say if these little parcels aren't put in there, it really limits anything that's going to go in there in the future. So we have gone through the applicant, we have gone through Mr. Paradise, we have gone through public comment, and now, correct, Marsha, voting? Uh, yes. Would, would you, you like to read the ordinance? Yes, ma'am, I'd be happy to. <laughs> ordinance number 06-2021, an ordinance of the city of Deltona, Florida, for a major amendment to the Deltona Village Business Plan Unit Development, BPUD, to add eight separate parcels consisting of a total of plus or minus 10.3 acres to be included within the Deltona Village BPUD and rezoned to BPUD and vacating certain lots and public right-of-ways associated with the eight separate parcels, um, providing for conflicts, providing for severability, and providing for an effective date. We will now do a voice vote, if you'll start al alphabetically, and as you vote, ladies and gentlemen, please give your reason for your vote for the record. Commis Commissioner Vila Vasquez. I vote yes. Um, all requirements were met, so yes. Commissioner King? Yes. Commissioner McCool? Yes. Commissioner Ramos? Yes. Commissioner Sosa? Yes, I met the requirements. Vice Mayor Bradford? Yes, I met all the requirements of everything that we have with comprehensive strategy peak plan and everything. And Mayor Herzberg. Yes, and it has um, followed the process and met the requirements. Uh, before we tally up the votes, uh, those that did not state a reason, do you need a reason, Marsha? I would prefer for the record. Please, um, for the record, but, if you didn't state. But I can't mandate anybody okay. to I, give a reason. Madam Mayor, I have no problem. It meets our requirements. Okay. Uh, my apologies. Saying this has met the requirements. Um, that's it, thank you. Okay, and is my counting? The motion passes seven to zero. You want mine? Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, I thought you It, it uh, is consistent with the comprehensive plan, and I do believe that uh, it will uh, help for future uh, unification of development. Thank you, sir. So the motion passes seven to zero, and second reading will be on December 13th. Thank you, commissioners. I know this is always a little more tedious than normal, and I appreciate your patience. We'll move on now to item 6B, a public hearing, resolution number 2021-38, a resolution to grant a conditional use for a community residential home located at 1059 East DiCarlo Drive. Mr. Paradise. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Ron Paradise, uh, for the record. Resolution 2021-38 is a request for a community residential home, CRH, at 1059 East DiCarlo Drive, 1059 East DiCarlo Drive is located at the southeastern corner of the intersection of DeCaro Drive and, and Alexander Avenue, just to the north of the Doyle Road corridor in the southern section of the city. The site is currently developed with a 2,686 square foot single family dwelling with a three bedroom two bath floor plan. The staff report said three bedroom, one bath, but that is incorrect. It's a typo, it should be a two bath facility. 
uh, the property is homesteaded by the applicant. The goal of this community residential home is to serve more, no more than three elderly patients slash residents at the, at the home. The operation will be regulated by the Florida Department of Healthcare Administration, otherwise known as ACA. <clears throat> uh, service for the residents will be provided by the applicant and another certified nurse uh, that will work in shifts. The uh, use is proposed for a property this lot is a little bit larger. It's about 14,000 square feet, a little less actually, than your typical Deltona Lakes lot, which is about 10,000 square feet. And the driveway does have adequate space to accommodate four vehicles for off-street parking purposes. The proposed CRH does comply with the criteria of the city code uh, under section 110. Uh, 814 subsection C. Uh, I would like to remind the City Commission that this conditional use, like any other conditional use, needs to be approved uh, or can only be approved by a supermajority of at least five votes. Uh, with that being said, staff finds a request not to materially alter the neighborhood and is consistent with the comprehensive plan subject to the following conditions. And I'll read these conditions out loud. They are a, a portion of the staff report. Uh, the dwelling shall serve no more than three non-related elderly residents at the dwelling. All residents and related services shall be directly associated with and regulated by the Agency for Healthcare Administration, ACA. The community residential home shall remain under management and ownership of Brenda Cruz, the property owner and applicant of 1059 East DeCaro Drive. A change of ownership will require new conditional use to operate a community residential home at this address. The applicant shall continue to utilize the dwelling as a primary residence, including maintaining the residence as a homesteaded dwelling. Uh, no signage shall be allowed besides what is allowed for home occupation, which is one by one sign posted on the house itself. And the proposed community residential home service is for an adult family care home. If the applicant desires to provide other services, a new conditional use application shall, shall be submitted to the city for review and action. I'll be happy to field any questions you all may have with regard to this. Thank you, sir. Commissioner McCool. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And um, I just um, don't want to freak out. Is the applicant here? Yes. The applicant is here? Okay, um, I, and not to freak anybody out, but I'm just asking um, about who, who takes care, because I'm looking um, here at the location from the aerial photo, and I had a question just about um, the, because it's close proximity to Alexander and Doyle, you know, I just want to make sh sure that if uh, the patients are ambulatory, that um, I'm just wondering, what are the requirements for the state or whatever? My concern is somebody wandering off property right onto a major road with it being close to a major road. So I'm all for this, but I just want that that question. Is that state or or what is that? Is that I, I'm going to let the applicant field okay. that, that question. Okay. Come on up, please, come up, please come up and give your name and name and address for the record, please. Thank you. Okay, my name is Brenda Cruz. Um, so you would like to know. Can, uh, thank you, Ron. Yeah. Okay, we only have right now at this moment it, from ACA, it'll probably be two, appli two applicants from the state, which will be ambulatory, but um, we have it in fenced and we also are gonna put an alarm system and cameras in there just in case anybody tries to elope. But uh, like I said, we're gonna alarm the thing and it will be alarmed at night too, because it's very important. I mean, we have one light, there's a lot of light there, but we also wanna keep the residents safe and make sure. And there's also, uh, there will be myself and another aide living there. 
So she would be working at night and I would be working at the day. Okay, so th thank you for educating me. That was really, it wasn't a question about the, you know what I mean, the quality that you're gonna be giving. I'm sure that somebody mm -hmm. that does this is gonna be given quality care. But this is just to assuage any questions if it comes up in the future. So thank you for right. clarifying that for you're me. Welcome. Thank you, Madam Mayor. That, that's all, thank that's you, all. sweetheart. Thank you, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Vice Mayor Bradford. I have a couple questions as well, ma'am. Oh, sorry, I have a couple questions as well. Thank um, you. When you say ambulatory, are they gonna be a rotation of different patients? Um, ambulatory from the definitions mm -hmm. that I'm looking at states, um, on an outpatient basis, including diagnosis, observation, consultation, treatment, intervention, rehabilitation services. So are these gonna be on a continued rotation? Or are these gonna be basically longer care than that? Um, usually when you have a home like that, if they have extensive care, they have to be moved. Like they can't be bed bound. Right, okay, and, and that's why I'm asking because I know when it comes to assisted living that there's a certain area that you can't go over when they have, well, say, dementia or something, you can't go past living. that care. Right. And, and the ACA license, when you have an ACA license, and, th and thank you, Mr. Paradise, you can probably answer this. Um, an ACA license, I believe, states that they can have up to five or six clients six. once they receive that ACA permit. Mm -hmm. So we're saying, hold up, you can only have three. Right. What stops us down the line of them saying, I'm adding three more and I'm within my guidelines because state trumps city? Well, there's two of us that live in the home, so that counts for the six. And then you could have up to four people but there, it doesn't go beyond six. Okay, I was under the understanding with ACA, the five or six was the patients, not the caretakers. So with ACA, um, it's the, the residents living there that are being caretaken for, not the individuals taking care of them. Okay. So yeah. you're saying you're counting yourself as a yes. person that's being taken care of? Right, we're okay. counting ourselves. Okay, but that's my concern that is. That could only hold six people according to you know the septic tank and the city rules it's only up to six so i can, I can hold four people that's it right but if you guys decide to live off site you then can bring in more you care you can't to live off site you have to live in the that's home. part in your aqua agreement well because i know well, when they do an aqua agreement it's five or six it. but yes you're supposed to um, th that'll be like when we hit state, then, uh, then we go after ACA and then we take our courses there. But we're supposed to live in the home. You could only live outside of a home if you're in assisted living. Okay. But not an adult. Okay, and this is your home, so you are going to be living there yes. full time. Yes. Um, so the, the build, the still gonna be considered your full time homestead. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Madam Mayor, can I just kind yes. of jump in here? Yes. Our conditional use is only for three. Mm -hmm. Well, that's so, my concern, yeah. but now we're, but uh, our conditional use is three, but the state ACA, when they give them an ACA license, ACA mm -hmm. says for an assisted living home, you can have, it's either five or six. six. So what's to stop them from adding the additional residents because state trumps city, correct? We would revoke the conditional use permit and because a few years ago we were having those kinds of problems and we started this process of having right. this conditional use. So one, we went to the PNC and then to the commission and the public could respond and all of this. So they don't trump us in okay. the number, I mean, the, the, we the application was for three. This has been there's three as a condition. So as far as I'm concerned, if there was a situation where the applicant wanted to go to six, or the state wanted three more in there, then we would have to do we would have to come in with an additional amendment or a new conditional use. Okay. I mean that's, that's the whole point of having a conditional use. It has specific conditions and say if we have a problem like we were having where people in the neighborhood weren't happy or things were going on and stuff, we were, our hands were tied. So that's why we have what we have. Okay. So this is three. 
Okay, that's fine. And I and okay. I love the assisted homes. I recommend anybody. That's the best way to go. I think you guys are awesome, and I mm -hmm. appreciate you guys giving your home and taking care of the individuals. Mm -hmm. Just I have to make sure, like she's saying that. People try to push it just to make money, and the, the residents are the ones who suffer at that point. So I just, I'm asking questions just to make sure, not so you know you feel any attack on you. Okay. Okay. Any other com questions, commissioners? I have a question before we go to um, public comment. I have a question for Mr. Paradise. Um, every other conditional use has come to us with six people. And my understanding was the same as the vice mayor, mm. that it was six patients that could be in there, or six individual people in addition to the homeowner. We wrong here? Uh, it is possible that they could have six people based on state law, but uh, whether it's APD or ACA or whoever else regulates, they all have square footage requirements and so forth per person that tends to limit the number of, of residents that can, that can be taken care of or, or housed in these facilities. And that's kind of what's driving some of these, these requirements. Now, if you look at the city code, the code limits based on six, which is directly from Florida Statutes 419 that establish these community residential home uses. Because I'm gonna go back to some of those other ones because I don't see that those houses are any bigger than this and she's got a good size lot. Yeah. Okay. Um, public comment. Madam Mayor, we have one public comment. Fred Goetz, please. Uh, mayor, Vice Mayor, Commissioners. Uh, my concern, I am a, uh, a homeowner. I'm on the corner of Doyle and Alexander. And my concern is pretty much along the same concerns as Commissioner McCool over there. Uh, there have been several major accidents at that intersection of Doyle and Alexander. My wife personally assisted one man from dying by stopping the bleeding. Uh, Myrna Martinez used to live on the other corner, which is, I'm not sure what the road that is. It's one right straight catty corner across from us. And her husband, who is now passed or deceased, um, 82 years old, was going across the street to get his dog and was almost killed at that intersection. And now m what I'm having a problem with here is we're talking about putting some more elderly people in this, this area. There's two bus stops there. I'm surprised a, a child has not been killed. I've seen very, very close incidences there where a kid has not been killed yet on that Doyle-Alexander intersection. Terrible place for bus stops. And now we're gonna put these elderly people there. To me, you're, you're, you're asking for a disaster, somebody, something major to happen there. And I would hate to see it happen. And I feel like that I should come forward and say something uh, uh, because if, if one of these senior people's out walking around and something happens to them, God forbid, because you're probably gonna get a lawsuit, you know, or something, and that would not be a good thing. And I, I'm here to address it and let you know ahead of time. So that's same thing, more or less, the same lines as Commissioner McCool said. So thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Appreciate Have your nice comments. Christmas and thank you. Anyone else? No, Mayor. That closes the public comment portion of the hearing. Um, commissioners, do you have any other comments? It's my understanding um, from what the applicant said, she is going to put in a fence, an alarm, and cameras for, for safety on this corner lot. Um, Commissioner McCool? 
Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, and without addressing anyone directly, um, as is prohibited after a comment, but I would like to say that um, I have scheduled tomorrow for, and it'll be more in depth in my uh, commission comments, uh, but a meeting with uh, Sheriff Chitwood and Captain Marina regarding traffic in general and, and some of, and addressing these issues. And um, so it's heard right and I'll speak more about that in my comments but um, I just wanted to relay that in general thank you thank you ma'am Commissioner Avila Vasquez thank you mayor I have a question for the applicant <laughs> okay. the um, the residents that are there now there are they are no residents there. You have nobody now. No. So will they be able to walk out on their own? Are they going to be supervised um, to make sure that they're not outside by themselves? Yeah, like I said, there's two shifts, and two, one will be awake at the night from 7 to 7, and then I'll do the morning from 7 to 7. So at this point, you don't really know what your guess will be, right? Who would— Well, you don't know— um, I know of one person that's coming, and uh, she's 95, so she, uh, I doubt she's going to walk out the door. But um, the other two we don't know because ACA actually comes, you know, when you ha I have to do a three-day training with core training with ACA, with ACA, and then ACA decides they'll come, they'll do an inspection of the home, um, and then they'll let me know. What, you know, they're gonna, they go, they come, and they bring somebody, and I don't know who it is. Okay, and, and all they these- They could be 95, they could be 70. It's just somebody who can't live on their own. Someone right. who can't cook, can't do for themselves. And these, um, going back to what you said, your home is going to be prepared mm -hmm. um, with the alarms and the gates and everything that's gonna be needed to keep them safe inside. Right. That it's going to be done before you even admit your first guest. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Who keeps track of that? Um, I do. Ron? You mean? So, what are you? Who keeps track who of keeps track? It's the state. The state. Uh, yeah. The state. The state comes so and they come I mean, in this and is they totally. To make sure that they do a check. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and that's really where the liability lies also is within that state program and they have jurisdiction. The city has jurisdiction only with regards to zoning, the conditional use, and the process that we go through to determine if it is appropriate under our rules for this conditional use. But we don't inspect them or check and see how the patients or the folks, and, and I hope they're not 70 because that's getting <laughs> close to my age, so I may have to come live with you, but anyway. <laughs> so, so I can I can um, say that once you start getting your guests, you have been approved and all inspections were passed. Right. Am I yeah. correct? Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Anyone else? Thank you very much. Okay, commissioners, seeing no more comments, we need a motion for the resolution either approval or a denial. Anyone like to make a motion on this? May I make a motion? Thank you. I hereby move to approve resolution number 2021-38, granting a conditional use for the community residential home located at 1059 East DeCarlo Drive, subject to the following conditions. Number one, the dwelling shall serve no more than three non-related elderly, elderly residents within the dwelling. Two, all residents and related services shall be directed, directly associated with and regulated, <coughs> excuse me, by the Agency for Healthcare Administration, AHCA. 
Three, the community residential home shall remain on the management and ownership of Brenda Cruz, the property owner of 1059 East Decarlo Drive. A change of ownership shall require a new conditional use to operate a community residential home. Four, the applicant shall continue to utilize the dwelling as a primary residence, including maintaining the residence as a homesteaded dwelling. Five, no, <laughs> oh my Lord. No signage shall be allowed besides what is allowed for home occupation. Six, the proposed community residential home service is for an adult family care home. If the applicant desires to provide any other service, services, a new conditional use application shall be submitted to the city for review and action. The city manager has the authority to make corrections of scrivener's errors and the like. Okay, properly moved by Commissioner Lavila Vasquez, seconded by Commissioner King. Since this is a resolution, we don't have to read anything. May we vote, please? Can I ask one quick question sure. here before we vote? Um, how often does the city go check on this to make sure that there is three residents there? Are we doing annual checks? Once a year associated with the BTR renewal. Okay, so generally for a BTR, for just doing a renewal, they just do a renewal, they just send a check in and pay it. So we're actually going out and doing yeah, a check? There, there is a fire inspection okay, that's associated thank you. with these. Madam Mayor? Yes. If I, if I can, just to rest assured, I understand and I hear some of the, the concerns, but I will tell you that ACA does a detail in reference before they get any type of certification. I can assure you that if ACA sees any concerns, they would not be approved. Thank you, Commissioner, and, and I would just like to say normally I am not in support of these simply because six residents in a three-bedroom, two-bath house in a residential neighborhood with all the extras that come with it, um, you have to be very careful that it doesn't disrupt the quality of life for, because it's a business for everyone else, even though the state allows it. In this case, um, with three residents and, and your... Um, your yard, your your lot size, and everything else. Um, to me, this is the most palatable one I've seen in in for for the most part of for all of them that have come in front of us. So um, the three residents is not definitely not over the top, as long as that's monitored. Okay, may we vote, please? time there's one of us. Motion passes seven to zero. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, we'll move on to the next item. It's a public hearing, resolution number 2021-59, approval to transmit the Affordable Housing Advisory Committee 2021 Incentive Review and Recommendation Report. Mr. Paradise, it's the Ron Show tonight. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Mayor, Ron Paradise. Uh, for the record, resolution number 2021-59 is a request uh, for the City Commission to approve the Affordable Housing Advisory Committee 2021 uh, incentive review and recommendation report and to transmit the report to the Florida Housing Finance Corporation. The city of Deltona, as an entitlement community, does receive strategic housing initiatives partnership, SHIP uh, funds. And based on receiving these funds, the city is required to form an affordable housing advisory committee and generate a report regarding incentives for affordable housing. Uh, as a point of reference, the city did last year receive $600,000 in state money, which has been earmarked for owner-occupied rehabilitation, 
uh, and or down payment assistance to help people buy houses. You know, these are income qualified uh, applicants and so forth. Um, there are 11 parameters of which the AHAC is required to review. These parameters, I'm not going to go through all 11, uh, range from the effect impact fees can have on housing costs to a review of opportunities for a local government to encourage transit-oriented development within their jurisdiction. Uh, the AHAC and the related report that's included as part of your agenda package was the first effort of the city to prepare the report under recent changes to Florida law uh, regarding the frequency of the report and the Affordable Housing Advisory Committee. Those changes some of the highlights of those changes of Florida law have resulted in the AHAC member being, the AHAC membership being expanded to include a city member of the elected body of the local government. And it also requires that these reports be reviewed, revisited, and otherwise redone on an annual basis. So this is just going to be part of our routine for the foreseeable future. Uh, with that being said, I would like to thank the AHAC board and the commissioner of Villa Vasquez that, you know, represented the city commission on the board with a job well done. There was a lot of meetings. The pace was, w w was pretty intense. Uh, city community development staff and the city's consultant, the Florida Housing Coalition also did a fantastic job arranging and otherwise moderate, moderating the many meetings that were held with regard to getting this report together. With regard to the report, it is a dynamic document and will be upgraded, refined, and otherwise improved every year. Uh, the AHAC is already set up and we've informed them that we're going to be talking to them to start this process again in February of 2022. There are a lot of excited people to undertake this, un th this report again here. Therefore, staff suggests the City Commission approve Resolution 2021-59 and direct the Acting City Manager to transmit the report to the Florida Housing Finance Corporation. I'll be happy to field any questions you all may have with regard to this. Any questions for Mr. Paradise, commissioners? Yes. <clears throat> Nothing on the board. I'm trying to get back there. It's hard to go. Commissioner ahead. McCool. Um, thank you very much, Ron, and I would like to thank the committee also for the awesome work and the, the questions that y'all ask and really uh, working on this. Ron, before transmittal, because this is my only time to ask about this, I would like to ask a couple of questions. Yes, okay. Do we have um, do we have any discounted land or donated land from developers for affordable housing? Not at this point in time, no, ma'am. Shocking. Did we provide a printed list of stock that the committee asked for? I saw that you did, but we have how much land in stock, Ron, that we could use for that cause? We did We did produce a graphic for the committee mm -hmm. to review. Uh, most of that land that the city owns or otherwise controls is not suitable to support housing. A lot of it is uh, water bodies and wetland areas associated with with the uh, lake systems here in the city. And how are we meeting the preservation and the reservation of future requirements? Because when we're talking about developing land in our city, we're really, really pointed about having enough stock for developers to do what they do. So I'm asking, what are we doing to ensure stock of housing, affordable housing, because as pointed out, no one wants a $150,000 home by $500,000 home. What are we doing to ensure affordable housing in our town? What we're doing is, with regard to affording affordable housing 
is participating with the CDBG program, the NSP program, and the SHIP program for down payment assistance to help income qualified households buy houses. We're also helping people stay in their homes by uh, helping these income qualified applicants fix up these dwelling units. Thank you. I want us to be cognizant moving forward into our future of Deltona that we're pricing our low and mid income people right out of our town, which in some places is construed as gentrification. And I want us to be cognizant of that. And my last remark on this, again, thank the staff and the the crew. You guys worked really hard on this, and I'm so very appreciative of this. Um, something that I noticed that was very glaring to me in this situation, looking at affordable housing, some of the comment was about um, uh, the developers chose um, for more low density um, in the affordable housing arena. And I just find it funny that when a developer is developing for high impact, high profit return that they are preaching high density or, you know, um, to, to turn a profit, but not so much when we're talking about allotting land or resources for um, affordable housing. So I just want us to work on that moving forward. This is my op only opportunity to talk about this. I love our city, but it is my opinion that we do too little to ensure, and it's not by um, any lack of staff and what you have to work with. I'm just saying that the, the inventory that we have is seriously lacking as to how we're taking care of affordable housing in Deltona. I think that buying these houses that um, we own as far as when um, we're mitigating uh, liens on houses or, or when we take possession is one of the best ways that we can recycle uh, that home and make it someone's first home or retirement home or whatever. So we have a lot of work to do, and um, uh, again, I can't thank you enough, Ron. I know that your team works really, really hard on this, um, but we have just, um, you know, I, I, I want us to be cognizant of how we're taking care of our housing stock moving forward. I know that you do. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying anything about staff. I'm saying us as a whole organic body need to be more cognizant, especially, and developers need to hear that also, is that we need their help in providing actual affordable housing for people that move here. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Vice Mayor Bradford. Actually, she covered a couple questions that I had, um, one being the density and the lots. Another one I noticed on page six, it was referencing location. And one of the references that the areas they were referencing is I-4 and 472. And, you know, I'm kind of questioning that area just because that's the commercial corridor. So I don't necessarily agree that we want to put these homes in a high, you know, in a commercial corridor area, you know, we really don't have any down there. That whole area is commercial. So I guess my question is, is do we have and have they received um, our projection of, okay, this quarter here is going to be this, this quarter here is gonna be this. I know, you know, we spoke about it during the strategic plan. I don't think it's totally been worked out, but I think that would be beneficial to this committee to have so they know what we're looking at doing as far as our different corridors. But, you know, to put low-income housing in a smack dab in the middle of a commercial corridor, I'm not agreeing with. Yeah, the, the committee was made aware of the city's zoning structure and future land use planning efforts. Commissioner Avila Vasquez. Thank you, Mayor. As Ron said, I am part of, of this um, AHAC committee and I'm also the Deltona representative for the state AHAC committee. And I'm part of this board because it's the state that mandates that um, a commissioner be part of the board. And I just want to point out one thing. This is our first phase. This is, this is only to get us into Tallahassee, into the government, so they can give us the money to start. Nothing has been identified of where affordable housing is going to build, be built. There is no such thing as low income. It's affordable housing for our community. 
And we have to get out of that mentality that it's not going to be in my backyard, because everybody has the right to live wherever they can live and wherever is made available to them. Um, so this report that is being presented to the commissioners, and uh, Ron, you can correct me if I'm wrong, is phase one. And what was discussed through all the, uh, the course of the year was we had to come up with a vision, and when we found a vision, what would be the obstacles of that vision? We uh, talked about parking. How are we going to address parking if this is what's going to be done? We have not identified any locations, so locations were mentioned, and whatever you mention is put on the report. Um, so please remember, this is phase one, and this is what's going to get us the city of Deltona, $600,000 grant to start to take our first step into creating affordable housing for the city of Deltona. So everything else that was mentioned here is going to be taken into consideration once we get to that part of what kind of houses we haven't even decided. Is it going to be two-story? Is it going to be townhouses? Is it going to be a subdivision? That has not been decided yet. That's going to be probably second or third phase. This is just brainstorming of what needs to be done to create affordable housing, what is going to be taken, what rules and policies we have to follow from the city of Deltona, what's going to affect us, what can be changed. That's what the questions that we were being told and we were being asked, and we brainstormed all this so that we can have an understanding of where, where to start, how to take the first step. So yes, everything that was mentioned here is being uh, taken into consideration and will probably be phase two or phase three of, of, you know, of when we start this. We don't, we don't even know where it's going to be done at this point, so I just don't want people to start calling us saying, not in my backyard. So, you know, I'm just going to leave it like that. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, Mr. Paradise, this report is sent to the state, and it's a mandate to receive the funding. And right now the funding is $600,000. That's correct, and it changes every and year. And ship money depends on what's in the State Housing Initiative Partnership, what if the Sadowski Trust is rated, and what's there, correct? Absolutely. So this is a completely variable number. This year we're getting a lot, 600000 yeah. There were years when we didn't get anything. The Tallahassee has a habit of rate rating the Sadowski Trust, which is what the State Housing Initiative Partnership is funded by. It's fun funded by doc stamps. That is the funding that is provided, a percentage of the doc stamps for real estate transactions and so forth is what is this, is provides this funding. The city has had SHIP funding for all the years that I've been here for on, on the dais, and, and before that, unless the fund has been rated by, the, by Tallahassee. Last year, uh, there were provisions put in place to try to prevent the rating of that fund. And uh, we'll see how that goes. So right now, the $600,000 that we received this year is allocated for, we just have, to clarify. It, yeah, it's, very, it's used for down payment assistance to hopefully help people, <laughs> you know, get into homes, you know, moderate and low income households and uh, owner-occupied rehabilitation, which is a program to help existing homeowners stay in their homes and deal with the effects of deferred maintenance. So the $600,000 that we're receiving is being distributed to the community in those ways? That's correct, yes. Because I don't want people to think with this report and, and reading through the report, there were questions asked, there were suggestions by the committee members, correct? This is no way a blueprint for building affordable housing. And it's not seed money for that either, is it, sir? That, that is correct. Can it be used as seed money for that? It could potentially, yes. You know, as, as these reports evolve, you know, the city can change strategies. Like I said, the city historically has used this money for owner oc rehab and down payment assistance, but it does have the ability to change its strategies as a part of its local housing assistance plan. 
and, and understand again that this amount every year is variable. It's not a set amount, That's and it correct. could change any time. So when you start looking at using this money for other things, which is the commission's w choice understand that you're dealing with a variable in amount. And when the city gets involved in that, you have to have a backup plan in terms of what you're gonna finance every single year, because this money it comes from the state, and like I said, hard to tell. So good job on the report, Commissioner Avila Vasquez, and then we'll go ahead for a, a public comment. Mayor, thank you. I just wanted to add that the reason we, we, we're uh, presenting this to the, well, Ron is presenting this to the commissioners is, is because the um, Tallahassee put a deadline. Mm -hmm. And if we don't have this at the desk of Tallahassee, we lose out mm -hmm. on that grant. And um, I want you to know that staff, as well as the board, which I see some members here uh, from the board, um, work so hard to meet up with that deadline. If we had not this, if we had not put this here today, we would lose. We have mm -hmm. low, We would have lost six hundred thousand dollars. Thank you, ma'am. Vice Mayor. I hereby approve resolution number twenty twenty one dash fifty nine and direct the city manager to transmit the affordable housing advisory committee twenty twenty one incentive and recommendation report to the Florida Housing Finance Corporation. The acting city manager has the authority to make corrections to Scribner errors and the like. Second. Properly moved by Vice Mayor Bradford, seconded by Commissioner King. Anybody sign up for public comment for this item? No, Madam Mayor. Then we'll close the public portion of the hearing for this public comment portion of the hearing for this item. We have a motion and a second. May we vote, please? Motion passes seven to zero, so Mr. Paradise, transmit away to Tallahassee. Now we move to um, old business, item 7A, one item under old business, the consideration of Commissioner Ramos's appointment to the Planning and Zoning Board and two alternate members for the remainder of their terms. Commissioner Ramos. Thank you, Madam Mayor. For my appointment, I appoint um, um, Jesus Gonzalez for the Planning and Zoning Board. Okay, so you uh, want to read the motion? Okay. So you're, you're I move to confirm. Oh. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> I move to confirm Commissioner Rommel's appointment of uh, Jesse Gonzalez uh, for the remainder of the term to expire March 15, 2023, and confirm that the commission. Well, I'm just doing my appointment. Mm -hmm. That's right. You're just doing your appointment. Yes. Is there a second? Second. Okay, properly moved by Commissioner Ramos for Jesus Gonzalez, seconded by Vice Mayor Bradford. Is there anyone from the public that's asked to speak on this item? Madam Mayor, we have one pub public comment. Gregory Latimer, please. Uh, good evening. Good evening, sir. I, uh, I, I, I withdraw the comment. I'm fine. Okay, Thank all you. right. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? No other? That was the only one? Okay, we'll close the public comment portion of this hearing. So we have a motion and a second for um, Commissioner Ramos's appointment, Jesus Gonzalez. May we vote on that one first, please? And the motion passes seven to zero. Now we have to fill two alternate appointments. Does anyone um, have a, an appointment, someone that they would like to appoint as an alternate? And if we do not have any choices, uh, Commissioner McCool. Madam Mayor, I um, hereby uh, request that we appoint Crystal Lilly as an alternate. Is there a second to that? Second. Okay, motion by Commissioner McCool to, rep to appoint Crystal Lilly as an alternate, seconded by the Vice Mayor. Any comments, Commissioners? Commissioner King, did you want to comment on this or? No, okay. We'll, okay, we'll just go ahead. No, let's just do them separate, just easier for the record. Okay, may we vote then on Crystal Lilly? Motion passes seven to zero. And Commissioner King. Who confirms the alternate appointment of Adam Kimmerling? Second. 
Okay, motion by Commissioner King for Mr. Adam Kemmerling as an alternate and seconded by Vice Mayor Bradford. May we vote please. Motion passes seven to zero. So we have Mr. Gonzalez as a permanent replacement on PNZ, Crystal Lilly, and Adam Kemmerling as alternates. Staff would please notify them. Commissioner McCool, did you are you still on the board to speak mm -hmm. or no? Can you un okay there we go. Okay, we'll move now to new business. Item 8A, we have a request for approval of an adjustment to the acting city manager's compensation based on a superior to excellent evaluations. Mr. Peters. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, if you go through the contract that was approved for my position back in December, um, paragraph two um, had two sections to deal with pay adjustment based on the annual evaluation. Uh, the first paragraph uh, states that um, I we receive an adjustment commensurate to what the directors receive. Um, citywide, all employees got $2.25 an hour. So based on that paragraph, um, I am requesting an adjustment of $2.25 an hour to my base pay. The next paragraph refers to other compensation based on the evaluation. Um, I included a spreadsheet um, of the city manager throughout Volusia County. Um, I think it's important to note that this spreadsheet was completed toward the end of September. Uh, so it does not include any pay adjustment that city managers around the county have received based on the new fiscal year. So these numbers may be somewhat out of date, um, but I believe they're still pertinent. Um, the two areas that I have emphasized in the commission report is the area under car allowance and the area under uh, phone allowance. Um, right now, I currently receive about $400 a month uh, for car allowance. Um, and when you look at the spreadsheet, the average in the county is, um, if you adjust for the outliers, which are, for the record, Oak Hill and Lake Helen, um, the number is $69 a year, uh, which is just short of, um, just a little bit over $500 a month. Uh, so it's about a hundred and uh, roughly twenty dollars a month adjustment up on my um, car allowance. Then the other item is the phone. Um, as many of you all know, I use my personal phone for city business for the most part. Um, I am not real thrilled with the city phone. Um, and so what I would like to do is just to do a phone allowance um, of $1,100 based on the countywide average. Um, and just to point out, because I did receive a couple inquiries over the weekend of how I came up with that money amount. Um, basically a data plan for most phones are about $45 a month. Um, if you uh, consider replacing of a phone every two years, um, and given the current prices of uh, smartphones, um, that number is anywhere from 40 to $60 a month for two year period, uh, which equates to about, in total, $100 a month, which would be 1,200. It's slightly more than the countywide average, so I'm just recommending that that allowance be the countywide average. <coughs> um, an important element, and part of the reason I have you know, focused on the car allowance and the phone allowance is my understanding that uh, the city does not contribute toward retirement for car allowances and phone allowances, whereas the city does contribute toward salary adjustment. So by making adjustments in the car allowance and the, uh, the phone allowance, the city is actually con uh, contributing less to the retirement than they would otherwise. 
So um, my request is an adjustment of uh, $2.25 an hour, an adjustment up to $6,269 for the car allowance and $1,100 for the phone allowance. Um, and that's basically my presentation. Thank you, sir. Commissioner McCool. I'm gonna say I can get behind uh, the car allowance 100% um, because I looked also at other cities, not just the ones listed here. I'm okay with that. Um, I know that we're not financing a Lamborghini and I know that you travel a lot, so I'm good with that. What I'm not good with is the personal phone situation because we are preached at all the time about personal versus city. And I don't think it's, um, I, and I understand, and I would like to understand if your personal phone has more to do um, with your um, accommodation. If so, I am behind it 100%, but if it's just because city phones aren't your jam, I'm not good with that. So I'd like to understand that and be supportive of that. Um, otherwise, um, those are my thoughts on those two issues. Thank you, um, ma'am. I'm glad you brought up the word accommodation when you talked about the phone. Um, as most of you are aware, I do wear hearing aids. Um, the particular brand of hearing aids I have to assist me with phone uses uh, is Bluetooth uh, compatible. Uh, it works very well with my personal phone. It does not work well with the city phones. The city uses an older model, and so my hearing aids are of a newer variety, and it works very well with my uh, current phone. Now, my staff hates it uh, because they walk in my office. They see me sitting there yabbering. They think I've lost my mind, which some days I have, um, because they're not sure. And they, they, they do this when they walk in to see if I'm on the phone or not, because it all transmits uh, through Bluetooth. And uh, so you know, my personal phone is an accommodation for my particular handicap, uh, because I do have a profound hearing loss. Uh, I don't talk about it much, but um, it is it is critical for me to be able to operate. Thank you, sir. Commissioner McCool does. Okay, commissioners, any other comments? We have public comment on this item. Madam Mayor, we have one public comment. Albert Bryan, please. Thank you. Albert Bryan, Deltona. Okay, um, I don't have a problem with quote unquote the raise. Because obviously you got pretty good evaluations. The average on the car allowance is okay. Where I have an issue is when you say that there's an average of $1,100 when there's only three other managers that use a personal phone. I'll split the difference with you. I'll give you $1,000 rather than $1,100. Because one is $900, then you have two at $1,200. And there again, I'll split the difference with him. I'll say $1,000 rather than $1,100. I don't think that's asking much since you're asking for a $2.50 raise per hour. Even though you did get a really good evaluation from almost everybody up there. Only one person put you in a three. I think that's pretty good. I think that's a statement of what you've done so far. Have I agreed with you on everything? No. Will I agree with you on everything? No, absolutely not. That's just not my personality, you know that. Um, do I like the job you're doing? About 90% yes. That's better than any other manager I've ever seen here. That's saying a lot, because most of the managers, I would give about 50% approval rating to. You know as well as I do that I have actually taken the time to do the evaluations for, for this man to see what I would give him compared to y'all. And actually, I'm lower than most of them this time, except for maybe one or two, because I was actually at about a 4.4 .4 this time, and that wasn't bad to me as far as I was concerned. 
Um, my issue still to this day is the same issue I've had all along with you, my budget. I want my budget done a certain way. You got plenty of time to fix that though, don't you? <laughs> but that's what I would ask for, that the phone, we split the difference, give you $1,000 rather than 1100 Thank you, sir. That closes the public comment portion of the hearing. Uh, let's see, Vice Mayor Bradford. Well, and as Mr. Bryant said, we don't always agree. We agree to disagree. And going to your personal cell phone throws yourself out there a lot. Because trust me, sometimes I'm just like, gosh, going to one phone would make life so much easier, but then you are throwing your life and your personal stuff out there. So I get it. Um, but with that, I'm gonna go ahead and make a motion. I move to authorize an adjustment to the acting city manager's compensation of to $217,666.50 based on the commissioner's annual evaluations as submitted. Is that correct? Mm. Is that the right number? I just switched screens here. 217. 217. Wait, hold on. No. 169. No, sorry. No, I included, right? No, with the salary, the car, minus the 301. Hold on. Should be 177.049. 177. Is it 177? All right, oh, change the number, hold on. I think, hold on. I think that included the 3% 401k. Sorry. 680, hold on. I'm just taking the numbers off of here. It's on one of these sheets here. Hold on. Mr. City Manager, can you tell me what the numbers is? 177,049. Because it's minus the 3%, right? You've got the the options right there on under the options on page ten of your I don't know it's a paper agenda. All right, well let me let me break it down then to a salary of one sixty five plus no, the one sixty nine six eighty. One sixty nine okay, then why is okay, so this is prior to it's right on here. Mine's not showing oh that one. I'm looking online. Come here, I can't see that far. I'm old. Let me see. Oh yeah, we should have this on the computer. Okay, I authorize a compensation adjustment consistent with an annual salary of 169,680, a car allowance of 62,69, and a phone allowance of 1,100, based on the commissioner's evaluations as submitted. Got the, the numbers are correct? Yep. Yeah, basically okay. if we tell them all together, yes. It's a motion by um, Vice Mayor Bradford. Is there a second? No second, motion second. dies for lack of, hmm? who? First. Commissioner Vila Vasquez. Okay, motion by Vice Mayor Bradford, second by Commissioner Evila Vasquez. We have nothing to write here, nothing to read, so may we vote please. More Jeopardy music. So we didn't need to include any of the other. Okay. That should be right. It's what's in the packet right here. No, that's a total with with um, retirement. Yeah, we'll just calculate the retirement. And the motion passes six to one. And we will, thank you, Mr. Peters. Um, I just wanna, I just wanna make a comment regarding this that um, we still don't have a public works director. So Mr. Peters, we have an assistant. Mr. Peters is, is working two jobs on that. We also don't have an HR director and our finance director has been moved up for internally and the deputy finance director has been moved up internally. And so now we're advertising out for another position. So when you look at the adjustment 
in how many employees were down in management positions and have been, and the adjustments that have been made, and we're still making progress, and we're still being more open and transparent with what's brought to this commission than has been in a long time, with all the contracts and everything else. Um, I know that it's a lot of work on staff, it's a lot of work for our, our manager, our acting manager, our deputy manager, our attorney, and I just want to say for all, all the staff that's there every single day and shuffling and uh, working without, thank you very much. It's a reflection of leadership. Okay, now we'll move on to nine. Number nine, public forum. Will you please let us know? Madam Mayor, we have six public comments. Stephen Evans, Lillian Rosemary Gonzalez, Larry Mack, Philip Lowe Ranger, Mike Will Michael Williams, and Kathy Bryan. Stephen Evans, please. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, four months ago, my family and I moved to Deltona from Orlando. So my question is around sewer and water costs. So I took uh, OCU, Sanford, DeLand, DeBerry, 7,000 gallons of cost using the cost, the cost calculator you have on your site, and it is 103% higher than OCU, 84% higher than Sanford, 30% higher than DeLand and 51% higher than DeBerry. So I'm getting 7,000 gallons for extremely high cost. So right now with four in the household, we're running $230, $250 a month by the time you add all the taxes in. I would like to ask first, is there any paperwork for the cost justification of what is being charged for the water cost? Do you have a breakdown that we can see? We don't comment back and forth from public comment, but I will um, finish your comments and then we will have that addressed. Um, All right. Um, next would be if a household has a water softener, would that affect the cost? Because I do know that Volusia County, if depending on if it's east or west, they have different prices for that. And then my last comment was... Okay. Can't find my last comment. It was on my phone. <laughs> it's okay. So. Did you um, leave your address with the clerk's office so that we they have a way to um, contact you and, and look up your stuff? email address. Okay, perfect. Okay. All right, thank you, sir. Right. And uh, we will have that addressed. Mr. Peters, you have heard the information the gentleman would like uh, cost justification and so forth. Yes, I can, I can very quickly. Uh, we had a rate study that we presented to the commission about this time last year. So you can go on uh, the city um, commission archives and find that rate study. Uh, it outlines the entire rate process and the breakdown on the rates. Okay. Uh, with regard to water softeners, uh, most water softeners have a, um, uh, a process where it regenerates, uh, it will actually uh, clean the filters, so to speak, and there is a small amount of water that goes out into the yard during the night or something like that. That really should be a very negligible difference in terms of the actual bill. And my other question was... Uh, go, go ahead, and we're, we're through with the public comment, but if you can go ahead and, and speak to him afterwards, that'd be great. Okay. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Lily and Rose, Mary Gonzalez, and Larry Mack, Philip Lone Ranger, Michael Williams, and Kathy Bryan. Lily and Rose, Mary Gonzalez, please. Good evening. Can you pull the mic down just a little bit? Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. A few years ago, I stood before you to present a certificate to the bus driver that saved my sons and my life from a runaway SUV. Speeders. A speeder, yes. 
on Fort Smith Boulevard, Deltona. Today, I come to you again because the problem has just gotten worse. In the last two years, I have had six incidents in front of my property and in my property alone. Three of them was just uh, speeding. They took the trash can, destroyed it three times. One of them jumped the curb, hit two cars parked in my driveway at 3 a.m. Another one uh, jumped the curb, hit my palm trees, and landed on the vacant lot. And then the most current one hit the light pole, the electric wire pole, took that down. The, po the wires hit incoming traffic. They couldn't see it because it was really dark at night. And I talked to the city of Deltona, and basically I was told that they couldn't do much but maybe put in a new light or more signs and that the problem was really up to me, you know, to take it on my own property and put barriers up. I don't think that's right. Um, during the three incidents where vehicles were involved, it took responders over 30 minutes to respond. But in the paperwork, it stated that it only took 15 minutes. In one case, it stated it only took 10 minutes. When I was on the phone, literally with the dispatcher for over 35 minutes waiting for a response. I don't know what can be done, but I just wanted to bring it up. She has another incident really quick. Yeah. What's the address? I, I'm speaking uh, for speeders as well, traffic violations. I don't know what can be done. I've asked for, uh, I live on a uh, Holover Boulevard, and there's been many, many incidents there. Uh, the last one, uh, a uh, major one. A ma well, there was two major ones. Um, one guy got hit, uh, almost didn't make it. He did make it, but uh, just recently, my mailbox was, uh, uh, the, city mailbox. the city mailbox was hit and knocked down. Right now, I don't have a mailbox to pick up my mail from. Um, and uh, what's my thought here? <laughs> I just wanted to bring awareness and to see what can be done because not much has been done. Um, has been done for this cause and things are getting worse. And I know I spoke to one officer who did last Sunday on my street alone, 96, gave 96 tickets and six arrests on Holover Boulevard alone. Um, and then, you know, from, I think he did, <laughs> there he is, hello. Um, so I just want to raise awareness. There's a lot going on in Deltona with traffic violations, speeders, distracted drivers. Um, I've asked for speed bumps, and they said that's not uh, allowed. So I don't know. How could you guys help us? Can we make sure that you leave your um, address, both of you, and address and contact information with the clerk so that we can address that and, and we can look into all of that in terms of your area and what else can be done, whether they're city roads, county roads, and so forth. Um, okay, Mr. Peters. Th thank you very much. Just make sure all your contact information is left with her so we know exactly where you are. Thank you very much. Okay, Larry Mack, then Philip, Low Ranger, Michael Williams, and Kathy Bryan. Larry Mack, please. Hello, everybody, uh, commissioners. Hello. I'm here to echo some of the things that have already been said uh, regarding uh, the Oath Keepers and Commissioner uh, King. Um, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, some have spoken of Commissioner King as a nice person, as if that alone can negate or counter some of the allegations that I've made about him being a member of the Oath Keepers and that that organization's sole purpose <laughs> is to negate some uh, constitutional rights of others and to stand up for constitutional rights of others. The Oath Keepers, again, correct me if I'm wrong, the Oath Keepers' only purpose is to safeguard that part of the Constitution, the main parts of the Constitution, uh, notwithstanding the Second Amendment. Um, 
correct me if I'm wrong, the Oath Keepers mostly only look at those main parts of the constitutions, and like I said, not uh, the Second Amendment, not uh, withstanding. The Oath Keepers, the, the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments are parts of the Constitution that relate the rights of people of color to those other rights listed in the Constitution. And there are those out there that continually try to erode those amendments that relate to people of color. I have never heard of anybody from the Oath Keepers to stand up for those uh, constitutional rights that have been eroded by people that are enabled by the Oath Keepers. And the commissioners are enabling this, this member of, past member of the Oath Keepers to remain by not sanctioning him. So that's all I have to say. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Point of order, Madam Mayor. I isn't there a policy about attacking a commissioner on the dais? Um, there is a I mean, policy I, I of atta you, 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 attacking. You, you have an issue where you always have people address the chair, but if you're going to single out a single commissioner, they, they have a right. They are not. Uh, they are addressing the chair, and they can I say. I was addressing the chair. That was not an attack on the chair. Sir, public, that was public a, comment. That was informative. I said that in the beginning. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Public comment is done on your time. Philip Low Ranger, Michael Williams, Kathy Bryan, John Bruno Shire, and Jim. Perosia, Pesha, <laughs> Philip Ranger, please. Hello, y'all. I'm gonna start something, do do a little something different here that you probably don't get a much tra traffic about. The word is kudos. Uh, we in Deltona are very fortunate. We got a, a good city manager. We got an awesome mayor, and we got a dynamite. Council. I'm here today, however, to speak up about one particular council member. Many of us who spend a lot of time in the military live in four principles. That's duty, honor, country, which includes the Constitution. And sir, you are wrong. Commissioner King embodies all of those things. If you take a moment to know him, you know what he does in the community, you know what he does with the American Legion, you know what he does with disabled veterans, you know what he does with people in need. It is becoming so common in this country that when you disagree with someone, you pull out a trigger word. And trigger word used most often in the last four years has been racism. I submit to you that those who scream the loudest are probably the racists in the room. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Michael Williams, Kathy Bryan, John Bruno Schuyler, Jim Perlsa. Mike, Michael Williams, please. Michael Williams. 2889 Cottageville Street, Deltona, a resident of Deltona since 1985. Uh, tonight, I just wanted to follow up on, I uh, hope all of you commissioners got a copy of the petition that we're gonna be filing for the recall of uh, Commissioner King. Uh, just so you know that we've already put the, working on putting that task force together that's required. We've been in touch with the supervisor of elections, Lisa Lewis, knowing what we need to do, forming a committee to do that. We've already appointed a chair for that committee. And oh, by the way, I'm gonna serve on that committee. And for all of you that know me, you know my reach is deep and wide when it comes to influencing people here in Deltona. So those thousand signatures that we're gonna need initially, that's pretty much as we say in sales, that's a burden that's on the ground. We're gonna knock that over right quick and get on to moving with the next step. We know Commissioner King is not gonna resign, so we're gonna move on to do what we need to do with the recall process. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Kathy Bryan, please. Good evening, everybody. Um, I just wanted to ask you guys something because 
we have we do I, I do like our city manager and I agree he's wonderful and all but there's one term that's in front of his name acting and how long is that going to continue um, I you know we started the process we were supposed to start the process last March when the whole COVID thing hit, but I'm just curious as to what's been done to start researching for somebody else. Um, I like Mr. Peters, but he's an acting city manager and he's holding down that plus a lot of other job titles. So I'm hoping that we'll start looking soon so that when something happens and he does decide to retire, we're not going, oh, shoot, we need a city manager. So there's that. Um, I'm hoping too that when it comes down to it that we'll cons maybe with the charter review stuff that maybe we'll get to um, even consider having the manager live within a certain distance out of, out of town. Um, I realize that uh, there's a lot of advantages to having your city manager and staff live in Deltona, but you want you don't want to bypass somebody who would be really good a good fit for the city just because of that so I'm hoping that you guys will take that into consideration number three um, I'm I'm very sorry that the people there's people doing accusations and and I get that but at the end of last meeting and I watch every meeting I'm not here for everyone but <laughs> Mr. King explained a lot of stuff, and I don't think anybody was in the room to hear that, number one. Number two, he offered to allow, you know, come sit and talk with me. Come sit and talk with me. And that's, that's one of the best ways to get things done, is an open line of communication. So I'm, I'm, it makes me very sad that I don't know if somebody ever did take something, take him up on that, but the last I heard, they had not. And I'm hoping they'll do that before, th there's too much divisiveness in this country. Way too much. And, and it's, it's, it's gotta stop. We've gotta come together and work together. So that's my spiel. Have a good night. Thank you, ma'am. John Bruno Schuyler, please. John Brunehler, District 6, 35 years. You've seen me here a lot, I rarely speak, but I've got one sentence. I defy anybody in this building to say they have done more than Commissioner King for this country, city, state, and the military veterans of the United States of America. I've got three minutes and 35 seconds left. Anybody? Nobody's done more. Thank you, Mr. King. Thank you, sir. Jim Pesella. Pesha. Pesha, sorry. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Jim Pasha, Deltona. Mr. King, I'm here to support you and tell you I'm standing with you. You're crying that you were being asked to step down for, to be punished for, was joining an organization, exercising your freedom of choice. You did nothing wrong. You did not commit any wrongdoing. You've not been charged with a crime. You have not been convicted with a, of a crime. You've done nothing more but stand up and serve this community, this country. And for this, a group of people who happen to not like an organization that you joined at one time in your past are asking you to be punished, to step down from doing a good job for our community. Please stand your ground. You have done nothing wrong, but yet those that are accusing you I don't think I can say the same for them. They are picking on you for no apparent reason. To let you know you are not standing alone, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Albert Bryan, please. <sighs> wow. Once again, we're here, public forum, once again, we're having to talk about one individual during public forum. 
man that I think stands for a lot of integrity. More than what I can say for some people. Um, but you know, it's funny. You serve in the military, you're a Navy SEAL, then you take time out of perhaps your retirement years, when you're supposed to be enjoying your wife, having fun, with, you know, with your veterans, and you come here to serve. I haven't heard one accusation saying that when you've been up there serving as a commissioner, you've done a bad job. Now, let me, let me think about this. It was mentioned earlier that you said that you would meet and sit down with them. You know, a good leader of the NAACP or the Black Democratic Caucus would actually meet with you, take the time to sit down. I guess they don't consider themselves good leaders. Because here again, a good leader would take the time to sit down with you, talk with you, find out what you're actually about. And they're going back almost a full year before you even started campaigning for your office and trying to drag you through the mud. It's funny how bad politics has reached all the way down to the city. Because that's all this is, is bad politics. And they called Trump a bad politician. Hmm. They took lessons from Mr. Trump, didn't they? Wow. Because, now let me think here. The NAACP has invited someone like Mr. Sharpton to Volusia County. And he owes how much in back taxes? And they say that you're a problem to our democracy. Oh, that's right. We're not even a democracy. We are a republic. Hmm. So before you start throwing mud at a glass house that has rocks in it, maybe you ought to look at your own glass house and think about all the small businesses last year that took a hit from an organization that resonated throughout the whole country. And yet, the NAACP here also supports them. If I remember right, they actually supported what the rioters were doing, which destroyed a lot of small businesses, minority businesses at that. And they call that good leadership. No, what I call good leadership is when you run your city properly, when you have a balanced budget, when you actually do things that serve your community as a whole, not just one sector of your community or one race of your community. I think a roll call of all y'all sitting up there and how you should support this man against these false accusations. Y'all have a good night. Thank you, sir. Madam Mayor, this ends public comments. Thank you very much. We will now move on to the consent agenda and item number 10 is comments on the consent agenda. Do we have anyone that signed up for comments on consent agenda? No, Madam Mayor. There's no comment, no one signed up for comments on a consent? Oh, I apologize. Albert Bryant? <laughs> Here we are again at consent agenda. Obviously, y'all ought to know me just because I was standing up here a minute ago. On consent agenda, hmm, I gotta find it in this big old thick book of y'all's. Wow, consent agenda, hmm. What is number A on consent agenda? 
Oh, number A is the funding for your fire department training facility. How much money is involved in that? Oh, $650,000, and yet we're going to throw that on consent agenda and just say, okay, just throw that check out there and spend the money. Okay, just a yes vote on that. Okay. I'd like to see that pulled and y'all actually have a true discussion. I know y'all discussed it before, but you know, for something with this much money, y'all need to pull that. Oh, let's go to B. What's B? Oh, the B is, oh, solid waste, and we gotta adjust the budget. Why are we adjusting the budget, you know? I mean, didn't we just vote on that budget? And we're already having to adjust the budget for solid waste. I mean, is, is that really part of consent agenda? Why is that not part of the regular agenda? You know, there's a theme here, there really is. Um, what's the other one? Oh, G. What is G? I'm gonna skip over a few other high items high dollar items, you know, but I'm going to go to G. And here we are, no discussion at all, just probably a consent, yes, on an eight inch gravity sewer main and a contract for a company with no discussion. Y'all don't think that the public needs to know this stuff? Y'all don't think y'all should have a decent conversation about this stuff. I mean, I'm, I'm gonna put this out there. I mean, y'all y'all should know my feelings about now, about consent agenda. I think you need to do away with consent agenda. I think everything y'all do should come under your view. Consent agenda is just a big check mark and saying, okay, we don't need to discuss it. Public don't really need to know about it. We're just gonna throw it out there and that's that. I call that hogwash. I was just up here, matter of fact, talking about good governance. Good governance means y'all actually take the time, especially when you have big ticket items, big money on the line, contracts on the line. Take the time to discuss this stuff. Take the time to actually educate the people out here not so much yourselves, but the people out here, um, what you're doing with their money. And the solid waste contract, I'm sorry. Y'all took and looked at that during the budget, and now all of a sudden, you're having to adjust it. That should throw up a red flag right there for all y'all. Thank you, sir. Madam Mayor, this ends public comment. Thank you. Commissioner Avila Vasquez, and then Commissioner McCool. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor, so I would like to make a comment on. Did you want to pull one of the items? Yes, ma'am. Which one? 11A. You want to pull A, okay, for the fire training grounds? Commissioner, is that it? Yes, ma'am. Commissioner McCool? Uh, Madam Mayor, ditto, and I spoke to Mr. Peters on Friday about pulling this, and I think that he was doing that already. Okay, so item A is pulled by Commissioner of Alaskas and Commissioner McCool. Do we have a motion for B, C, D, E, and F, and G? No motion on these items. Let's go to item A, and we will let the rest sit, since we have no motion for that. Item A. Thank you, Mayor. So, um, I have spoken about this a while back. Um, and one of the things that I remember and brought up during my conversation and meeting was, have we addressed or have we um, met with the Daytona State College to speak about the possibility of the property that is right by us, um, which I believe was being leased to the city for a dollar a year? That's the city hall that's being leased to the city, only this property for a dollar a year. I'm not talking about this property. I'm talking about the property that we had looked for the sports complex. Um, I know there was uh, <clears throat> excuse me, communication going back and forth. I, I just can't see how we're buying a property from somebody that was suing the city. Um, and, and I just don't find that, and I drove around here. I think this is like so far from 
the location of the city of Deltona. And if we're looking to bring other businesses, other cities to be part of this, um, we should have a location that's suitable for everyone. Um, so my question is, again, have we researched, have we looked into the possibility of speaking to Daytona State College on that property around here that was at one point offered to the city of Deltona for the sports complex? Um, it's my understanding that a previous commissioner and a previous two city managers had internal discussions about putting the fire training facility in the preserve back here. None of us were aware of that. I was not aware of that until it was made, uh, it was notified to me probably in the last few weeks that that discussion was ongoing uh, by former members of the commission and previous city managers. I had no prior knowledge of that. All I knew is that when we had looked at doing the gym back here, there was discussions with uh, Daytona State College. I don't know that we are leasing that piece of property. Marsha, do you remember that we're leasing that for a dollar a year? I don't believe we have any rights to that property except the property that City Hall sits on. I think that under a previous city manager, there was an attempt to pursue that. Yes, and then and the funding went away for that. We decided yeah. not to do the $5 million for yeah. that funding, for that gym. And so gym. we had dr a draft um, agreement, but as far as I know, it was never finalized, not that I'm aware of. I don't think it ever came before the commission to be finalized that we're leasing any property back there. Um, and I don't know how far the discussion went for uh, in the previous relationship, if it was even discussed with Daytona State College. None of that was brought forth. Like I said, I, being on the commission, I never knew anything about that. Maybe the fire chief has any um, knowledge to that? Sir? Um, the only the only knowledge I know anything about it is back when Ms. Shang was here. Um, it was uh, a conversation she had with me that she did uh, reach out to Daytona State and see if they would be interested in, in a fire training center in, in this area, and they weren't at that time. Uh, they were more interested in putting the gym in, um, but that's about as far as I know on any conversation that they've had uh, with Daytona State, and that was, again, you know, Several years May I, about, yeah. And if I may finish with my uh, comment, I'm not aware of any commissioners discussing this. Other, This is my first time bringing it up. I have not discussed this with anybody. I just remember that um, with a former, and yeah, breathe heavy. And I just remember that with a former uh, city manager, the option was the training center or the sports complex. And that's the reason why I'm bringing it up now. Um, I d was not aware of previous or prior or current commissioners discussing this until now, unless somebody else here has. I'm not sure. Thank you, ma'am. Commissioner McCool? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, in the conversation that I had um, with the city manager um, about this, um, purchase, um, much like we do everything else that we are envisioning for our city, this needs to go into the hands of impartial professionals as deducing like where a fire training center should be. Um, as somebody that understands the impact of where the traffic and bringing different municipalities and agencies in to train there at the, at the whatever property that is, and also with the actual people that, you know, fight fires uh, and other emergency people. So they're, I think they're the ones to make and work with um, our staff and with the departments on making that determination. Um, also, I understand that um, the, the purchase of that property out there um, is, um, that, that property is, is, I don't know what it is suited for, but whatever is suited for is going to have to be okay with a bunch of noise that's coming from uh, next door because there are never any barriers, sound barriers put up, sound proofing, sound management, sound mitigation, anything. So whatever needs to go out there needs to be 
industrial or whatever also where that noise isn't going to bother. So if you've not been out there to look at that property, I would encourage um, us to, to, to whoever's not to take a look at it. It is a good piece of property um, that would be well suited for future endeavors, but I think that the professionals need to determine where a new fire training center should be and get input. Um, and also putting a fire training center and just be aware of this that you know we have it's preserved that area is preserved and with I just want it to be looked at because that is eco sensitive area we've designated this as eco sensitive area here and we need to be cognizant of that as far as noise and traffic. So I'm just bringing these issues up. I know that there's a right answer, but I'm pretty sure that we're not the professionals to deduce that. And so, you know, my ask is that we pull this item, um, pull this consent and talk about this more. I'm in agreement with purchasing the property to add to our stock because it's a good piece of property, but because I don't know, to put the fire training center out there. You know, it's, I'm not a professional. So that's all I have, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Commissioner King. I, I think we're I'm experiencing a little deja vu here. Um, it seems to me that we have already discussed all of this. And I was under the impression that the fire chief Snyder and the city manager were already uh, telling us that this was a good piece of property. It was a nice place for this facility to be uh, located. Uh, it was good for uh, future use as far as other uh, agencies coming in. And we approved it for the $650,000. Am I wrong? Mr. Peters, Chief Snyder, one of y'all, please answer me. <laughs> we had a previous workshop where we talked about a uh, fire training facility. Um, at that time, I believe we pointed out that we were looking at, at one time, two different parcels. Um, we inquired about another parcel that was off of Lake Allen Oakdean Road. Mm -hmm. uh, the property owner, which was the church, was unwilling to uh, negotiate. So then we went back to the Lawhoon property out on 415. Um, we never really felt like that the property here was a viable site. Um, we're talking about a fire training facility. Um, you know, part of the activity is, you know, you have sirens going, you have fires going, um, and, you know, that's not really a use that I would find to be conducive to a preserve, um, especially one of this type. Um, you know, it's unfortunate that, um, you know, there were discussions that were had uh, without the benefit of the commission. Um, I have been very open with every one of you all that we were looking at this property, um, the Lahoon property. Um, as you all recall previously, um, there was a desire for many people on the commission to purchase that property uh, because of perceived slights in the past against the Lahoon. Uh, so that was one of the reasons that we continued to look at the property. Uh, but we felt like a fire training facility you know, also had sheriff department element, had public works element, has utility elements. It has a lot of elements that we really need from a training perspective. Um, there's a lot of excitement out there for the facility from other agencies. And uh, so our recommendation was to proceed with the purchase. Uh, we have negotiated in good faith with the property owners. Um, it's now Mr. Lahoon's widow and stepdaughters, I believe there are two of them. And uh, we have come to terms, which is part of what you have before you. Uh, the only thing that we had any issue with was some language in the final agreement. Um, but other than, as I told Ms. McCool, I had planned to pull this item 
uh, because we need to clarify on the motion that the closing documents need to be approved at the form by the city attorney. Um, but um, you know, I think we operate in good faith as a staff in terms of informing the commission uh, where we were heading. Um, and so, you know, this was just part of that process. This started back uh, 11 months ago, 10 months ago, when we modified the um, uh, transport MOU with the fire department. Um, the original transport agreement that was given to me by the previous uh, interim city manager uh, contemplated that any additional money left over in that MOU would go to the bargaining table. And you know, the whole emphasis in talking to the, uh, the fire union was their desire to have an adequate training facility. Mr. Novick, his last words while he was on commission, right before he got off, was his desire to build a fire training facility that was needed in the community. So there had been consensus all along that a facility is needed. Um, you know, we need 18 to 20 acre, usable acres. Uh, this particular property put the bill. It's right next to our wastewater plant. Uh, so we're able to take advantage of access through our own property without um, impacting the neighbors out there in terms of traffic. And uh, so we just felt like this was a very uh, good piece of property for us to pursue for this purpose. Commissioner King, does that clarify? So knowing all of that, what you're asking for now is the extra $200,000, which is what it's gonna take to purchase that property. That is correct, sir. Well, I'm, I'm for purchasing the property. Commissioner Ramos. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I think unfortunately the challenge here is the amount of acreage that we're gonna need um, for a fire training ground. I don't think any one of us here is against it. Uh, but as you were speaking, and, and I'm not sure if you answered, but I'm gonna ask the question. You said the excitement of other agencies. Have we reached out? Because I remember part of the, the presentation was that this is not necessarily just for us but it's also for our neighboring cities. So I guess my question would be, not necessarily about our chief, but have we reached out to Orange City, DeBerry, and the land, and gotten their input um, to see whether they have a buy-in? Because what I would hate is that we do this, mm -hmm. and then we say there's excitement, but just because of location purposes, I might say, well, it's easier for me to go to uh, Daytona Beach than it is to come here. So. That would be just my question right now. Have we reached out and do we have some type of, not necessarily agreement, but buy-in from our neighboring cities? Because at the end of the day, we're not doing this just for us. At least that's what I'm thinking. We're doing this also to be able to acquire some, some dollars from our neighboring cities and make it um, feasible for all of us. Um, to mention Ramos, um, I'll let the chief confirm this, but um, my understanding is there have been meetings with the Chiefs Association. Um, we have talked about it. I know Deputy Chief Switcher indicated there was a real excitement. Um, I spoke to the city manager in DeBerry today because they're a unique situation. They don't have a fire department, but they do have a stormwater uh, division within their public works department. I talked to him about the, the element that would have pipes in the ground where they can practice working on pipes and trench uh, shoring and that type of thing. He was very excited with the, the, even that prospect for them. The sheriff I had spoken to, he is very excited about the potential that he can uh, have with regard to the, the track uh, for you know, cars and, and uh, you know, driving skills and, and that type of thing. So even the sheriff is very excited about the potential. but. Chief Switcher, you can talk. Um, yeah, I, um, I have talked to the other agencies and they are excited about the fact that if we're gonna put in a training center that they would love to train with us. Um, we do a, a lot of training together um, already um, at, the, at the Volusia County Training Center. Um, 
I haven't gone into specifics about locations per se, um, other than the fact that I have, you know, told them that we we're looking at this property in the 415 area. Um, but, you know, I haven't said specifically where or any of that kind of stuff, but there has been some excitement about the fact that there'll be something closer than what um, what is all the way over at, at, at Tiger Bay. Now, if you're talking about north of land, it's probably going to be a toss-up, um, but, you know, if you're talking south the land, we're going to be a lot closer, and the land in general, you know, is going to come either one place or another, and I believe they would come and train with us. So, um, the other other kind of issue that we have here in Deltona is there's not a whole lot of big property that is not surrounded by houses, um, and so you know wherever you put this piece of property, you know. Um, if we put it around a bunch of houses, we're going to have a bunch of complaints. Mm -hmm. um, we may have to curtail when we when we train. May not be able to train as late and things like that. Um, so, 415. You know, I, I, if, if I was to say it was the ideal location, I'm not going to sit here and say it's the ideal location, but it's a, it's a good location. And, um, you know, I think anywhere else in Deltona that you're going to look, you're either going to have a bunch of houses or you're going to have a bunch of expense. Because, you know, if you're talking about down by Amazon or something like that, you know, um, that'd be ideal for being around other, other agencies a lot closer and stuff like that. But, you know, you're going to pay a pretty penny for property down there. So, um, that's thank, kind of my, and thank, we've thank, had these discussions, so. Thank, thank you, Chief, for that. I guess my only concern in his comment was that location was not discussed. And I just thought, for me, I, I think it would have been nice uh, as we're having those conversations that if we do have a location, for them to be aware of it. That's, that would be my only flag in, in the comment. Obviously, there's always going to be excitement. Uh, but yes, the challenge that we have here is where else are we going to find a piece of land? Uh, in, in this aspect, but again, I wish that part of those conversations would have been actually giving them a location and maybe that excitement would have a little bit more concrete. Thank and, you. and part of that was that we were looking at the Lo Lake Helen uh, Osteen uh, area location as, as another site, um, but that did fall through that they, they weren't interested. I thought for sure they would be, but, um, but they weren't. So it's kind of, you know, um, we've discussed Mr. Mom, if so. I could jump in, um, Ms. Kipolo and I met with the county uh, manager and the assistant county manager. Uh, as part of the meeting that we had, this site in Pacific was mentioned. Uh, the county had an interest in it because they do have fire facilities on this side of the county rather than having to go back to the east side for training purposes. So they were told about specifically about this site and they expressed an interest. Thank you, sir. Vice Mayor. Wow. Well, I was a little confused too because I don't think we really discussed it, but I will say um, the choice of choosing that property to me is exceptional because that's, it's it's an area where we've had concerning residents be there. Um, and, and like, you know, Commissioner Villavasquez mentioned there, there was a suit there. So to me, it's a perfect alternative. You know, the fire training ground needs to be in an area that's not going to cause any undo breathing, harm, stress, noise, whatever could happen that somebody's going to have and where this is going. I think it's it's actually a great selection. Um, I also like that, like you're saying, Mr. Peters, is you have the additional avenues of training. You know, do I think maybe every single training, maybe Orange City is going to come there? Maybe not. They may say, hey, let's go over here now and get some change up and let's go over here. But what it does provide is options. And you guys need options, both fire and police, when it comes to training. So you're not training in the same atmosphere over and over and over again. And that's critical, because you're not going into the same fire and scenario over and over again. So the aspect of it, I love it. I think it's great. I'm happy to see us moving forward with, with us. What I'm not happy with is if it ever is decided to go, I, I hope we do stay with that property. I don't want something going in. Like one of the problems we had with the municipal complex, I remember was this is an, you know, our endangered species and our protected land. So to me right here, it's not an option. Plus we're gonna have residents 
probably not too happy with us. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm I'm happy with the location. Thank you guys for the selection. Um, I'm kind of in agreement with Mr. Bryan on this, is I think this is something that maybe shouldn't just be on a consent that we should be able to have an opportunity to talk about. I know sometimes these things are thrown on here, maybe just to speed up the meeting, but these items we really do need to talk about. So I'd like to see us take a little bit more consideration into that for future reference. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Commissioner McCool. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And I just, you know, my point in bringing all of this up is to um, to flush out and say that we've covered all of our bases as far as this property. I think that um, you know, especially my push to, to purchase this property, and it has been that. And I just want to make sure that we have a consensus on location from all agencies involved. That's it. I want everything to be out in the open. I want us to have asked the questions and discussed so that when anyone asks us, we say, yes, we've covered our bases by A, B, and C. So that's the only thing. I am happy and I'm pretty sure that, um, I'm pretty sure that Keith would approve of this also and that this is going to, um, this property will go to a good use. So I just wanna make sure that all agencies have consensus on this property, that's all. I'm trying to do my due diligence as a commissioner and as a good steward of land. So that's all I wanna say. Thank you, Madam Mayor, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Commissioner Sosa. Okay. Um, first of all, this facility is the one that butts up to the Eastern Water Plant. So as far as noise goes, I think that's gonna be washed out by the water plant. That was one of the major concerns of the previous tenant. So for this facility to be in that location, I think is an excellent location for this facility. If I'm not mistaken, I believe it's 20, 23 acres or something like that. Um, it's about 20 acres and we believe uh, based on our review of uh, uh, wetlands, it would be 18 usable acres, which is plenty of land for what we need to do. About 18 usable? Okay. Now, where my concerns do come in is when we look at it in reality, Deltona is going to use this the most. They're going to actually, the city of Deltona will absorb the majority of this cost because DeBerry does not have its own fire department. It contracts through Orange City. The only other municipality close to here is Orange City that would probably use that facility. And I've seen Orange City's budget and I'm not sure they're going to contribute a lot to Deltona. So my, my main concerns is we keep saying we're bringing in other agencies, but I think the reality of it is Deltona's gonna take the brunt of the expenses here. Um, and, and that brings up a couple questions. Have we decided, have we talked to these other organizations to see if they're gonna go and do a buy-in with us or are we just gonna do a lease to them? And, you know, are we gonna rent it out? How, how, what, what, what are we gonna do with this? Because I don't think that was ever discussed. I'd like to know where the financials are going with this. And I know you'd said we'd look at uh, doing stormwater and laying pipe, but I'll, I'll be honest with you, when you build this facility, it's gonna be expensive. And you're not gonna do it all in one day. This is probably gonna be a 10 year plus project. It, by the time you put stormwater and all that in there, you bring other f organizations over. So I wanna know, how do you plan on budgeting for each of the different items going in? Our plan is next week, next Monday night, we will have a workshop item to discuss uh, funding options uh, for this facility. Um, it could be the traditional pay-as-you-go, um, it could be um, all the way up to a P3, which is a public-private partnership. Uh, the advantage of public-private partnerships is you get uh, people who have built the facilities around the state. Uh, they've already had plans that they have used before, so you're not paying a lot of money for the architectural designs and stuff like that. Uh, they also uh, provide the financing uh, the going rate right now is about 1.8%, uh, so that if we wanted to build it sooner, 
um, the public-private partnership would be a way to do that, or if we want to pay it over time. Uh, but the critical thing for us is when you look at how much we pay to send our employees to Daytona to do the training, uh, we have to provide backup for them back at the home base, which means overtime. And so there is a cost savings that comes out of this. But under the terms of the uh, transport MOU, um, there is about $400,000 a year that would be available um, based on the, the transport we were doing at the time of that MOU. Since then, we have added another transport time frame. Uh, part of the discussion that Ms. Kipolo and I had with the county manager and the assistant county manager was a discussion about expanding, essentially, to taking over all the transport in Deltona, how we can get there. We have a new ambulance that will be coming online February, March time frame, so we would be in a position to take over another set of transport. Um, and there were some discussions of how we could just go to complete uh, overall operation of transport in the city of Deltona sooner. Uh, I don't want to go into the detail because that's going to be some more discussion, but um, there have been a lot of meetings, a lot of conversations, um, and next Monday night we will uh, present to you uh, some funding options that we can look at with regard to this facility and then the commission can kind of give us a nod as to how you want to proceed. Uh, do you want to do it pay as you go, or do you want to do it somewhere in between? But you know, right now, I think the, the latest numbers, and Mary, you can correct me here, but I think we've gone from 400,000 that's going into the transport facility line under the MOU to something more like 650 to 800,000, I believe, the number. Uh, so that's a significant difference. That's just two transport out of four that we could do. Uh, so obviously, if we can get to a third one in February, March, uh, that number goes up even more. And, um, and then if we can get the fourth one, um, you know, we had the means of, of paying for this out of the transport budget. Uh, which is a very significant thing and the main way that we can even present it to you all for consideration. Now, do, do you have anything written down as a plan to what you plan on building first? Because with the fire training facility, you're going to have a burn tower, I'm sure, probably some houses to go into. Now, you had also said that you wanted to do an emergency management center there. Um, emergency management center facility instead of doing city hall in, in the case of disasters? An EOC. An EOC, yes. It was an EOC, but it would be a combination room for, that would also be used for classroom training. Okay. So it's a combo room. Now, have you gotten any costs, any general cost on how much all this is going to cost? Stay tuned to Monday. I'm really not comfortable having that discussion tonight because that's not what we were here for. Uh, okay. We will discuss a cost next week. Uh, so, and that will be general numbers. Okay. Now, I know you also said the sheriff would use it for a driving facility, but didn't the sheriff's office just build a, or is in the process of building a new uh, driving training facility out in Daytona? Wasn't that part of their budget this year? I, I, I thought that got approved. So I don't really know if he'd be using our facility. Um, once again, the the, uh, the sheriff is like the county. Uh, for him to transfer people over to Daytona to do something um, is expensive. If we have an option as part of our fire training facility design that can be beneficial to him, then obviously it would make financial sense for him to utilize our facility. Okay. Are you going to get any commitments from these other departments before we actually start proceeding? 
Can you add that again? Are, are you gonna get a commitment from any of these or other organizations prior to us expending money? Um, other than purchasing the land, yes, sir. Yes, other than purchasing the land. All right, thank you. Commissioner King. Madam Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to hereby move to recommend approval of resolution number 2021-60 and the budget amendment to move $200,000 from the municipal complex fund balance to complete the purchase of the property for the fire training grounds. Active city manager has the authority to correct expenditures. Uh, uh, er errors and the like. Second. Second. Okay, properly made motion. Ma the motion has been properly made Madam by Mayor. Commissioner King, seconded by. Madam Mayor, um, it, Mr. King can modify that motion to say in a form approved by the city attorney. Can you modify that? Can I, yes. Can I also add that we are getting title work done, so it will be also subject to the title work that we get on the property also. Okay, so please add that to my motion. Is that are, good? Are you okay with the second, Vice Mayor, adding those two things on there? You good, Marsha? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, that's okay. fine. I just, we have to know that, you know, we've so got adding, the title in. Okay. You have that, correct, added to the motion. Okay, um, before we vote, since we've already had public comment on the consent agenda, just wanna make two comments. Basically, if you wanna do a fire training facility, you have three options. You got this place, the preserve, you have the parcel that we're looking at, and the other one's the Alexander Rib area in the middle of the city. That has enough acreage and we already own that. That would be a disaster because it's in the middle of a residential area and all the, the trucks and the equipment and everything just going down those streets would be horrendous. I don't know of any other parcels in the city that are large enough or available at this time. That said, Mr. Peters, you also have a second use for this property, sir, considering the wells? Yes, ma'am. Um, Please explain. Yes, ma'am, part of what we're looking at is on the corner of the property to putting in two wells. Um, this property is outside of the Blue Springs uh, basement, uh, Blue Springs Basin, and the Blue Springs Basin has a basement management action plan, BMAP, and uh, one of the challenges that we have is when we put a well inside the Blue Springs Basin, we're limited to what we can do without providing compensation in terms of water in the aquifer. Um, we, what we'd like to do is include two wells that can be treated and put into the reclaim system at relatively small cost. And that water will augment our reclaim system during the dry months of March to uh, mid-June. Um, and in addition, the reclaim line will take the water to rapid infiltration basins that we are putting around the city to put the water back into the aquifer more efficiently. So um, it's very beneficial to our consumptive use permit to have these two wells, and that is what our plan is going forward. So that's also part of the, that's on this piece of property. What's your maximum amount of wells that you can put there should we need any more? Is it two the maximum? Um, we haven't really evaluated, ma'am. Uh, the property is, is quite large. Uh, typically, we would like to have five to 600 feet between wells. Uh, we're talking 20 acres, so there's probably uh, potential for more, but you know, part of the evaluation is what our needs are uh, in terms of uh, the additional water. But we, we know we have a need for two right now. We have enough land there that we could add some later if there was a need. Because I, I'm looking at this for the future because the BMAP area and, the, and the, this whole area that a good portion of our city is in is problematic when it comes to wells. And at some point, we're gonna have to look outside of that. And if this piece of property affords that option 
It's a dual use. In other words, no matter what happens with the fire training facility, you have an option for water mitigation. Looking at the preserved property here, and I did receive concern from a couple of residents regarding the use of this property. The time frame, the time frame to look at doing something on this property by the time you have to have a discussion with Daytona State, you have to send it to the state for approval. Am I correct? Mm -hmm. This has to, this, it has to go to the state because this is not our property. It belongs to the, it's school it, property basically. Yes, yes ma'am. And the other thing to remember is uh, with Mr. Lawhorn's passing, um, his family is desirous of um, you know, selling this property. Um, I think all of them are out of state, North Carolina, Texas, uh, Tennessee, Kentucky. Um, so they want to sell the property and anything we do to de delay the process, uh, there's a potential that they could sell it uh, to someone else. Well, my, my, my reason for bringing that up is if you're looking at using or even attempting to use this preserved property here for something like a fire training facility, I believe you will run into a lot, a lot of problems because it is essentially a preserve and designated as such. And a fire training facility has a lot more impact than a gym in terms of greater use and also in terms of, of what you're using to do it, what you're doing with that facility. And I would, I would expect that we will mitigate and use the least amount of impact of any type of detrimental items that are used in a fire training facility because PFAS is a big problem. And if there's any way, shape, or form that that's going to be used in any fire training facility, I will absolutely be adamantly against that. And when you're looking at this property, not gonna happen with that, with any any indication of using any type of the PFAS chemicals. So I hope we can mitigate that and not even go near there. So we have a motion and a second. May we vote, please. And the motion passes seven to zero. Commissioners, we have items B, C, D, E, F, G on consent. If Vice Mayor, are you there? You lit up. Yes, Madam Mayor, I would like to make a motion to approve consent item B, C, D, E, F, and G. <coughs> Is there Sorry. a second? Second. Properly moved by Vice Mayor Bradford, seconded by Commissioner McCool for consent agenda, agenda items B, C, D, E, F, G. May we vote, please? Did you go away now, too? What is going on down here? At this end with the wiring. We're good, people. It hasn't hit me yet. You guys are too electrifying. <laughs> There's a lot of... Right now, so that's right. <laughs> Where's the balance hand down here? I'm not so sure. <laughs> You go, girl. That's funny that it was. Maybe we need to check the, the signal over here. And the motion passes six to one for B, C, D, F, and G. City Commission special reports and requests. Any takers this evening? And Vice Mayor. Did you, Commissioner, also? Okay. Can we confirm, I am having a lot of residents contact regarding the parade. Uh -huh. And they still have a misconception that we're having a parade on Deltona Boulevard. 
So I don't know what we can do. Um, like I've had individuals call me and say, okay, I'm confused. I've heard we're doing this, but I heard we're still having a parade. And I'm like, okay, I've heard no parade. So as far as I know, there was no parade. We're just doing the drive-through. Um, so I don't know what we can do to beef it up. How can we confirm it? I mean, somebody told me they called here and was even told there was a parade. So that's, that's where I got a little confused. Um, Vice Mayor, what we are planning is similar to what we did last year, but on steroids. Um, as you all know, legal? we had a drive-through uh, here. Um, and this year, we're going to take it to the next level. We're going to have other vendors here. Uh, we're going to have food trucks as part of it. Um, we're working with Daytona State College to get parking down on that end so that we can open up more of the parking lot for uh, people to enjoy the floats and what have you. Um, and you know, we believe this is a better way of getting outreach uh, to the community. Um, one of the complaints that you hear with regard to parades is the fact that you know, somebody giving out candy, the kids come running up to the vehicles. Um, the only place we really have in this city that is acceptable for a parade would be Deltona Boulevard. Um, it's extremely difficult shorting people parking at the plaza <clears throat> where uh, Family Health Source is. Um, there's not a whole lot of parking opportunities out there. Um, you know, we have done it in the past, uh, but I will also tell you that um, a parade um, is very taxing on our staff. It, it's surprising that you know, having a drive-through here is much easier for the staff to prepare for. Um, and so you know, we'll you the one. decision was made to do a, a drive-through event here but at a much higher level so that the community can enjoy it. Well, because, you know, a couple of the individuals that contacted me were actually private parade floats and, and companies that participated in them. So, you know, they took advantage of this event every year to not just be in the parade, but that, that's their time to, to be on the community and kind of advertising, I guess. So the question to me is, well, how do we participate? How are we involved in the city or, or are you gonna have the same sponsors you always do? So it kind of was a big stab, you know, and I understand what they're seeing. So I don't know if we can reach out to private, not private, previous attendees of the parade, not attendees, but you know, the individual companies that had floats. Because pretty much any business that's a business in Deltona and a couple surrounding cities, they participated in the, the parade. You know, we have every group and every organization, our youth groups, our Cub Scouts, Boy Scouts, I mean, explorers, everybody participated in the parade. And I think that's what they're really missing is it's not just the parade, it's the preparation, the, the festivities and that. So I guess their biggest question is, well, when were we gonna be informed and how do we participate in what you're doing now? Um, excellent question. Uh, we will, I will get with Fox and Rec tomorrow, make sure they outreach to everybody who participated in the past, if they haven't done already. Um, and for anyone who is interested in participating, I strongly encourage to call our Parks and Rec Department. Uh, they're the ones that are handling this event. Um, and, you know, like I said, we're making arrangements with Daytona State College to have parking over on their area, even though they own all of it, over on their school area. And that way we can open up more of the facility here. Uh, Y'all have noticed the electrical work going in. We're going to enhance the lighting. Uh, of the trees and things of that nature. So uh, we really are trying to take the whole thing to another level. Honestly, uh, we got a lot of very positive feedback from last year's event. We felt like we could take it to another level. Um, but I would definitely have Parks and Rec reach out to people that have been, have participated in the past in the parade 
so that they are aware that uh, this is available for them. Okay, and then can we kick it up a notch other than just Facebook and Twitter and that to get it to the residents on what's going on and how to participate, you know, where to come. Thank you. Commissioner Avila Vasquez. Thank you, Mayor. Um, two things. I, going back to Vice Mayor's comment about the Christmas parade, a lot of people are disappointed that we're not having the parade. I can understand that now it's a little bit too late, but I think going back to next year, we should start planning a parade. Um, that had, the city of Deltona has, I've been here 22 years, and the city has had a Christmas parade every single year, and it's attended by a lot of people, not only residents of the city of Deltona. The plan is already there. It's been done before. The plan is already there. It's just executing the plan and getting the right uh, staff to put it together. So I, this year again, you know, we won't be able to go back, but I think in 2022, we need to have our Christmas parade. Um, the other thing I would like to ask uh, the city manager is, um, I'm sure we all read an email uh, from, um, and I apologize if you're looking at the meeting, can't remember um, the gentleman's name, but he brought to our attention the next year, Deltona Lakes, will be celebrating its 50th anniversary. Mr. Burbank. Not this, I'm sorry? Tom Burbank. Tom Burbank, right. Not the city of Deltona, but Deltona Lakes, since Deltona has been in existence. So I'm asked, and I spoke to the city manager during our off, uh, off uh, meeting, off commission meetings, that I would like um, this to be brought to maybe one of the chambers to see if they would like to take it on and maybe put something uh, for the residents of the city of Deltona to celebrate the 50th anniversary of Deltona Lakes. And that's my two uh, requests, madam. Thank you, ma'am. Um, we'll go to Commissioner McCool and then we'll come back to... Special reports and requests. I have one thing only. Um, I do have some uh, comments, but uh, special reports and requests. Um, I, too, join the um, thousands of Deltonians who are, would like to protest against having a traditional parade. Um, there's nothing like standing and getting candy thrown, and so I would like to see the parade brought back, the traditional parade. I would apologize to staff um, in the very beginning. I'm very sorry that it takes a lot, but we also have a lot of great volunteers. If we don't have enough help, I would be more than happy to volunteer in order for us to have a traditional parade. So I'm going to very cheerfully and mischievous elfishly um, be so 100% behind our city lights and other festivities that are most excellent parks and rec and other staff uh, have planned. I'm going to make a joyful noise, um, but I would also like to put in early request for a 4th of July parade down Deltona Boulevard, flag waving and merriment and patriotism. Um, that is my special request, and I just would like that to be on the record, and I stand with my fellow Deltonians and commissioners that would like to see the traditional parade brought back back up if the city manager is listening. Thank you. I think we're all shaking it up here. So, I think, everybody's going to hate these words, we need a workshop, um, we need to have a discussion on, on special events for this coming year because um, I think the parade needs to be a discussion. You have cheerleading up here for that, and also, Commissioner, your, your comments about um, Deltona's uh, 50th, Deltona Lakes, we did not have, we had all the th things set up for the 25th, and that ended up being a wash. So I think um, after the first of the year, Mr. Peters, if, if we can have a, a meeting with, with staff, a workshop with staff, and discuss the upcoming events, because to throw events together at the last minute never works well. 
And I can say we're working on our communication. I hope that we're working on, I know Parks has a really good email list and, and we should have a, a master constant contact list that we can send out for all the things that we have going on. For example, the lights, Christmas drive through and so forth. So uh, if that is of the commission's wish, to have a discussion after the first of the year on events yes, for this next year? Do we have consensus for that? Mayor, I think that um, the 50th anniversary, it would be better to maybe have the chamber take mm -hmm. it over. Sure. Because they'll do all the work and, you know. But I think it for us, and everything. I mean, my goal is for to have, and we've heard all this with communication, is to have the city participate and co-sponsor, like in some way, shape, or form. Even if our sponsorship is advertising and using the, our our ability to get the the events out to the public, because over and over again we hear that the people don't know what's going on, and we're a big city with a lot of people, and a communication has been, you know, a real problem for years and years and years. So I think that even with if the chamber goes forth with it, we need to have a participation level in order to do the outreach because that should be our job as well. If you, you know, so I think, Commissioner Sosa, are you okay with the discussion? Commissioner Avila Vasquez, you are. Yes, definitely. Yes, yes, yes. I, yeah, I, I not just you know July Fourth and Christmas. You know, I also received a lot of complaints. You know, we didn't do anything Memorial Day. We didn't do anything Veterans Day. You know, these are some sensitive areas that we just have kind of let go, you know, and I've also had people ask, you know, what happened to the turkeys? I mean, COVID's changed a lot of things and I think people are ready to get back to a normal. So we need to try to figure out, we can't get back to a total normal, but how can we get it through a comfortable time? I, I mean, there's just, it's tough. Well, so that's, our job. So I think having it so we can discuss not just that, but you know, like we've got this one and that one and that one, we're going to actually have to pick and choose because we've only got so much in the budget. I know uh, he's looking at me like, mm -hmm, y'all approved that budget. I got it. So I think we need to have everything kind of opened up and what we are and what we're not. And I'm for it. Yes. And I, and I think, commissioners, if you have events or something like you, you mentioned several from the past, parades, please email the manager with those requests so that we, when we have a workshop, you actually have a list of items that we can talk about and vet through and see what we would, what we would like to have. Because I definitely think something for Veterans Day is a must. And we have the Veterans Museum and we definitely need to, to promote that. So enough with that, but you have your task, Mr. Peters and staff. Uh, I was gonna just say, uh, I think we need to have a, a comprehensive discussion after the first of the year. Yes. I have already had discussions with several people about the city taking over um, Memorial Day and uh, Veterans Day. Uh, one of the ideas that I had found out with a couple of you all is um, maybe changing one of those events to include something with the water, uh, where you know veterans are brought in by boat. Um, you know, we did have a number of naval facilities around. Uh, this area during the Second World War, uh, so you know, there is a Navy element. Uh, but those are things that we can talk about when we sit down together because there are some logistical issues with regard to parades and all, and I think we all need to have that discussion so that we have a greater appreciation of those logistical issues. Uh, because I would love to have a huge, wonderful parade, um, but the logistics is going to limit what we can do. Now, there may be some other alternative locations. Um, you know, the, the big problem we have is we don't control our major roadways. Uh, we don't control Sasson, we don't control Providence, we don't control Highland. Um, and even at that, you know, many of them have raised medians in the middle, uh, which limits what can happen. So. We'll get together after the first of the year. We'll have a two-hour workshop uh, to talk about it. We'll have a lively discussion, and staff will be prepared, and I please ask that you not shoot the messenger, uh, but we will discuss the pros and cons of each, and then we can make an uh, educated decision. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you, sir. City Attorney, any comments? City Manager, any comments? Do, 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 do. No, ma'am. What? City Commission comments. Who wants to begin tonight? I say Commissioner Rummels. I'm good, Madam Mayor, thank you. Commissioner Vila Vasquez, we're gonna change it up tonight. Thank you. I just want to uh, let everyone know that today I attended the uh, Sanford River, River Walk uh, ribbon cutting, and it was absolutely beautiful. If you haven't gone to Sanford and, and taken a look at what they've done with their walkway, it's unbelievably beautiful. They were very happy that the city of Deltona was there representing. And um, I spoke to the city manager, and he's looking forward to continue with our sister city um, um, signage or whatever that we did years ago. Um, so I just I'm just want to put it out there like that. I also want to give a shout out to New Hope uh, Baptist that did a really nice uh, festival this past weekend, and they gave out some. Uh, food and stuff like that. It was very well attended. And I just want to make one comment um, that we all have our time up here to make comments. And we all have our time to express our suggestions and ideas. We might not all agree with what each of us say, but I think we all should need to respect each commissioner's or mayor's comments and, and, and suggestions. Um, at the long run, we're all going to vote the way we feel that we need the best for the city of Deltona. But um, when we're talking, I think it's, we all, all owe each other respect to respect when we're talking, not make any faces, not speak out when somebody's speaking uh, because you disagree on what anybody else is saying. So I just want to put it out there that we need to respect each other when we are asked for our own comments. That's all I'm saying. Thank you, ma'am. Commissioner McCool. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I would like to invite uh, the public out. There is going to be a ribbon cutting grand opening at Fresco Mas Supermarket. Um, it is taking place in the where the old Winn Dixie was in Providence Boulevard. Um, this is my district. I'm very excited about the improvements going on uh, in the district, and I, it's an exciting time um, as we expand um, as we expand that and do a facelift out there. It's been great. Um, I, I love that area. I love the businesses in there. So come out and support Wednesday morning um, at 8 a.m. I would like to thank um, staff and the city manager, because I've, in rapid fire succession, sent them resident complaints, and, and, and not that they don't answer these, but they really looked into them. They answered the residents, and I'm thankful for that. Also, tomorrow at 1 o'clock, I will be meeting with Sheriff Chitwood and Captain Marino um, over um, discussing informally but formally um, some some traffic issues and some serious uh, concerns that residents have with the speedway that has become Deltona. And I know that I've mentioned it before, um, and it, it's just very serious. People are concerned with their quality of life, with safety. There have been some really good suggestions. Um, as far as, you know, what we can do as residents, um, as far as asking about speed control devices, not my area of expertise, but I'm dang sure going to ask about it, especially in some of these residential areas again. So I took uh, informal, um, which is Mr. Peter's favorite, um, social media polls. Um, we know how scientific they are, but they do provide insight as to what's on people's mind, and so I'm very, very um, I'm very serious about that. I talked about where people saw the speedways and they were just, people came forward with what their concerns were uh, about different areas. So i um, thankful for that. Uh, and then I'll report back to uh, residents with what I learned tomorrow, what the ask is, and also uh, with the city manager regarding what we can do as far as a show of force. Again, 
people should be terrified to speed in Deltona, but they're not even terrified to pass you uh, in front of City Hall going 50 miles an hour. So I'm hoping that we can do um, something about that. Um, also, um, this is my last time speaking on this matter, but I feel compelled yet again as one of our um, commissioners has been attacked again and continually regarding um, be, regarding an old affiliation that he had before he was even a um, m member up here on the dais before he was elected, before he sought election. And it is my contention that, again, all organizations have the propensity to go bad. And I did, I alluded to it last time, but when we're pointing fingers at who belongs to what organization, I think that we need to look at the atrocities that go on inside of organizations that are supposed to be good also. Organizations, fraternal organizations, religious organizations and organizations that we all support. There's always gonna be bad seeds in no matter what organization. I have been accused myself of being racist uh, and discriminatory, uh, and that's absolutely not fact. And as we move along, I will speak more on that um, in the future. But it's absolute BS, and um, you know, listen, we, you're gonna have lawsuits, litigation, fingers pointed all the time, and I can't look at any of my fellow commissioners or mayors, or even anyone that I see sitting in the audience right now and say that they are racist or discriminatory. I think that it is a cheap tool. I think that it's being used for political gain, and if I ever had any hopes of a political Political career. I'm pretty sure I'm tanking that um, by talking about this, but I am not going to um, I am not going to be silent while somebody is subversively um, accused of being a racist that I know is not. It's sad, it's pathetic, it's cheap, and there's no room for that in our diverse city for, for that to be said. I've heard it on the radio, um, and again, it's cheap, and um, it's divisive, and I don't see um, the person that's being accused of being divisive being divisive in any way. If anything, this man has tried, he's worked his whole career and life on taking care and being inclusive of people, and he's still doing it today. So it's cheap, do what you gotta do. Um, and again, my main thing is just remember in judging people that remember that sugar and salt look the same. So I'm gonna leave you with that, and uh, thank you all for showing up tonight. Thank you, ma'am. Commissioner Sosa? Um, I've been getting several complaints on issues, and one of the main ones has been excessive speeding, which Commissioner McCool just talked about. And, you know, I, I've sent Captain Marino a couple emails, and he's looking into it, you know, especially on Howland between um, Cortland and Fort Smith, especially uh, on the weekends, it turns into a drag strip over there. A uh, couple other areas of Fort Smith, Indy, and Cortland. So that's something that we can really start looking into. I believe that's going to be one of our major safety issues going forward. Um, an another thing has been, I've been getting a lot of complaints regarding our parks, just the general maintenance on our parks with litter, the lack of just painting a building, uh, just remodeling the bathrooms, fresh washing them, fresh coats of paint. And it seems like we're really lacking in the general maintenance of our parks. Um, the other issue was the lighting at Keysville Dog Park. I know I sent you an email on that, and um, I believe Parks and Rex did the parking lot lights. However, I talked to the resident again, and he's referring to the lights within the park. There were about six or eight solar lights that are no longer functioning. If we could look into getting those, especially with the it getting dark at 5.30 now, six o'clock. It's getting dark. If we can get some lighting in that park, that would be great. And um, one issue that's been going around for about three years now, 
is the feral cats on ship rock that we just can't get a handle on. Um, we, we, we just had an issue and I get several emails, several phone calls regarding the feral cats on ship rock. If there's any way that we could look at getting either our animal control or getting an expert in here to trap those cats and rehome them because these residents are having issues there and it's been going for three years. And you know, even though I've only been up here a year, it's still a three year issue and I take responsibility for the three years, sir, just like you've just been sitting there a year, but you're responsible for the three years as well. So if we can get a handle on that, I'd definitely appreciate it. We're working on it, sir. You good, Commissioner? Yeah. Okay. Um, Commissioner King. Thank you, Mayor. Um, <clears throat> first of all, I will be there on Wednesday at the re-grand opening of the Winn-Dixie as a fresco. Um, I will wear my commissioner badge and my American Legion hat. Uh, our post will be there uh, with a color guard that they've asked us to present colors there. So we will be there for that. I um, want everybody to know that uh, uh, Reese Cross America, last day for us to collect money, will be on the 19th, this Friday. Um, if you want to donate online, you can still do that uh, up until uh, the 23rd. After the 23rd, that's the cutoff. Um, <clears throat> that's uh, that's really all I have to say tonight. I think I've said everything else already. Um, there's nothing else I can say except, uh, Mr. Floor, I got your message and I'll see you tomorrow. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Vice Mayor. Okay. Don't shoot me, okay? But everybody loves Santa, and I know I'm saying this before Thanksgiving, but who would not want to go and sit in Santa's sleigh, give Santa a present, get your picture taken, and, see, and take pictures with your kids, see the fire trucks come down the road and the police cars? Who would not want to do that? Nobody, right? So this Friday, between at seven to nine, the fire trucks usually bring Santa about seven o'clock over to Walkerton Road. And it is an amazing display. We have fire, there's fire trucks will bring Santa. Well, he either, they either bring him or he rides in his special red truck. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And you have an opportunity to bring the kids, bring the grandkids, whoever. Doesn't cost you anything other than a toy for tots to go in the box, and then Santa will give them hot cocoa, cookies, they can walk around and look at the Christmas trees, and this is in our own city. So I encourage, if you've got kids, bring them down. It's 2515 Walkertown Avenue in Deltona. And, you know, I get there a little bit before 7, but it's, it's a fun night. It's a fun time for the kids. It doesn't cost anything, and it's an exceptional kickoff to the, the holiday season, again, that we all need. So I'm going to give it to you one more time. 2515 Walkertown Avenue in Deltona. So anybody has questions, you're welcome to email me. Um, but I encourage you all to come out and have a good time and get a nice hot cup of cocoa because it's, it's, it's going to be chilly. It always is for Santa. So um, as Commissioner Vasquez mentioned, Hope Fest was amazing. There was probably... I'm going to say close to 15 different social service groups there, and the attendance was amazing. So as you're there, you just realize how much our community needs the social services, and at the same time, how our community social services come together to support a community in need. So it, it goes both ways. You know, I just, I can't praise the family and the New Hope family enough for what they're doing for the community. Um, and I think a lot of people went away there with a, with 
abundance of information. I know the county was given information out as well on their programs. Our city was there giving information on theirs. Um, there was meals being given away. So it was a great time. And these are just some of the events that our wonderful city does and puts on. And we should be very proud of our city. We should be proud of the accomplishments that this commission has achieved with our wonderful city managers, acting city managers help. So I, j I just want to encourage us all to stay positive. Um, we can't let anybody ruin our shine because there's been a lot achieved and we're gonna have an awesome Christmas season this year. I feel it, you guys feel it, right? I mean, we feel like, I feel like we got a few Santas in prep out there in the, in the audience. You know, we've got one up here in prep, so I feel it's gonna be an awesome holiday season. Katie, I'd love to see you there Friday night doing some doing some news on our Toys for Talk kickoff. So everybody have a happy weekend. Thank you, ma'am. Um, just two things. Um, Commissioner Vila Vasquez, Commissioner Ramos, does Family Health Source have their ribbon cutting this week? It is, yes, I, I have that on my calendar. It is at um, the Deltona Boulevard location, correct? Do you have a time for that? I have a 5 p.m. Yes. Is that correct? Um, okay, Family Health Source, uh, I think the West Volusia Regional Chamber is, is putting that on. But they have been a big part of our community over the last, especially over the last year, and a very, very big participant in, in a lot of things that have gone on in the city. So I didn't wanna, uh, I knew you guys would know uh, about that. Um, also, the only comment that I have is um, I'd like to invite all our Deltona residents to the State of the City. We are doing a State of the City for the residents at 5.30 uh, in two weeks from tomorrow on the 30th of November. It will be at the center. At this point, we want to do it out in the back in, in the garden area with alternative plans should the weather become inclement to do that inside. The morning presentation is being put on by the West Volusia Regional Chamber of Commerce. It's also at the center, but that is a... Uh, a Chamber of Commerce event. And that said, commissioners, several of you have um, have answered the call to participate and have done your, uh, or talked about what you'd like to, to be part of in the video. Um, to those of you that have not, please get with Mr. Peters and or Stacy. Uh, time is running short. If there's something you would like to highlight, I know that we were, uh, from my understanding, we were at Hope Fest. We've done uh, several other organizations. And if there's something you'd like to highlight, just to even, we have video footage, you can do a voiceover, or you can highlight something in your district or something that's near and dear to your heart. So please get with staff if you have not done that and you feel so inclined to participate. So again, 5.30, the 30th of November at the center, we welcome all of the residents of Deltona to come out and see where we are and where we are going. Thank you, commissioners. Thank you for everyone for the public that stayed here tonight and those of you that participated. Thanks again. We are adjourned.